What's up guys? It's yo boy Omni Sensei. Welcome to, What If I Was Reborn in Cobra Kai? Becoming the Dragon Warrior, Part 2. Remember to check out the original story, the link is in the description. With all that out of the way, enjoy. A decisive point awarded to Dash sparked celebration from everyone, including those who had expected him to lose honorably. Tell me, what would happen if I hit the wound on your face? Marcus asked as he raised his fists. You just hit me, of course you would if you could, Dash replied as he positioned himself at the other end of the mat. Those words snapped Marcus out of a dreamy feeling that he could still win the fight. His gaze turned cold as he awaited the referee to initiate the match. Marcus, today I'll show you how brutal I can be, and then you'll understand that if it weren't for the wound that has limited me for a long time, you'd already be on the ground. Dash's muscles tense, his gaze focused, and his guard showed more aggression than ever. The position was the true northern dragon combat stance, which was more kung fu than karate, but at this point, no one could discern the difference. Marcus mocked Dash's ridiculous fighting stance, but as he took a step forward, he didn't know how to attack him, let alone anticipate how he would be attacked nonsense. At one point, Marcus took a step forward and attacked with a kick to the side, which was immediately blocked by Dash's left leg. In an instant, Dash forcefully struck a specific muscle of his opponent. Witnessing this scene, many in the audience, unfamiliar with karate, believe Dash's stance was magnificent, something seen only in overrated martial arts movies. Oj. Dash forcefully hit a specific point, planning to break down Marcus's defenses before targeting the real objective, which was to inflict damage. Having landed the first blow, Dash prepared to defend himself, but at that moment, a second attack targeted his right shoulder. This blow would obviously score a point, but Marcus dodged it by taking it on the underside of his shoulder. To everyone's surprise, Dash's guard was extremely effective. How is it that no one so far had been able to decipher the trajectory of his blows? Even Marcus's confident demeanor changed from one moment to another. He could slowly feel his muscles numbing, and it became increasingly difficult to keep up with Dash's pace. And in this instance, he finally showed fear on his face. You're not unique, there are stronger men, and right now, you're facing a kid. Dash looked at Marcus, who had stopped advancing, his expression filled with confusion, surprising everyone. As he uttered those words, Dash advanced forcefully and began an offensive so rapid that it left his opponent unsure of what to do. Zaz. Faced with Dash's sudden speed, never before demonstrated, everyone stood up and widened their eyes to see if any of those blows landed on Marcus. His blows aren't targeting the points, he's completely breaking down Marcus's defense, Daniel murmured, looking bewildered. Daniel and many connoisseurs didn't know why Dash wanted to show this level of combat just now, but what was confusion for them was a message for Frederick, Dash's father. Look dad, I'm ready for the tournament in China. Observing the great skills demonstrated by an 11 year old, everyone who was here just to watch a few women's fights were overwhelmed. Dash wasn't punching the air, each of his blows was directed at Marcus's defenses, which were becoming increasingly challenging to maintain. He never had a rival in this preparation tournament. Devin exclaimed, absolutely proud of where Dash stood in martial arts. Facing Marcus's desperate final counterattack, Dash remained calm as the motion of his hand suddenly shifted to the defensive. At the moment he counterattacked, Marcus's arm strangely dropped down, while a violent punch came from the front again. Thud. The audience watched as Dash's punch clearly hit Marcus's chest, sending him flying backward out of the arena bounds, and ultimately falling to the ground, completely defeated. An absolute silence dominated the grand venue. No one could have imagined that Marcus, who seemed to be at a considerable advantage, would be so cleanly defeated by someone smaller than him. Well, that's what you should have done from the beginning, Mr. Kim clenched his fists at the offspring of his teachings. Point, winner. Yes. The champion of the male division Dash Hale, shouted the presenter, handing him his trophy immediately. It was amazing. Devin climbed onto the mat and embraced Dash, thrilled that he had won the competition that even they doubted they could win. This is our prize. Dash said as he held the winner's trophy. At this moment, Dash felt an incredible emotion in his chest. All the hard work he had put in had truly led him to a clean championship victory. He had just discovered that his skills were something more than talented. Now, he had no doubts about going far in the China tournament, and was even sure he could take the first place. Now it's my turn. 
Devin stopped hugging Dash and looked at Sam with an unbroken fighting spirit. Well done, Dash. Mr. Kim said as he approached. All of this is thanks to your teachings, Mr. Kim. Dash said as he handed the trophy to Mr. Kim, who was one of the most crucial figures in his journey to this point. Having the winner of the male division, it all comes down to the female division waiting for us in a few moments. Shouted the tournament presenter, pointing to the winner. Under the platform where the fights had taken place, Dash looked at Devin and asked, Are you ready? Devin nodded, looked Dash in the eyes, and said, I'll bring that trophy back. I'm waiting for that calmly. Dash was confident that Devin would win, she had been brutal in the fights, and observing Sam's level of karate, he really didn't understand how she had managed to make it to the final. The incredible surprises for the audience made everyone amazed at how incredible contact sports could be, which had been consumed much less frequently over the years, and had been replaced by other, more brutal martial arts. She'll win, I'm sure of that Dash thought as a doctor checked the wound on his forehead, which had started bleeding again. Sam, who had stepped onto the platform, looked at Devin seriously. After positioning herself in her corner, she gave her opponent an indifferent look, showing that her thoughts were calm. Devin had acquired a new vision for this fight. She had been furious since Dash was unexpectedly attacked, and now she was about to unleash all that anger. The likelihood of losing to Sam, who wielded a unique combat style similar to hers, was low in her eyes. Still, she wouldn't let her guard down for a moment. Look at me, Bo. Look at each other, Bo. Sam and Devin greeted each other. Then, the referee initiated the fight. Fight. As the fight began, the audience was ecstatic, and the support for this match was divided regarding who they wanted to win. Taking advantage of her speed, Devin took a step forward and initiated the fight with a quick kick to Sam's side. Thud. Sam blocked it, but the blow left her arm sore. Just as she wanted to advance, Devin kicked again in the same spot, causing Sam's previously recovered leg injury to hurt even more. Ah. Point. The referee, seeing the pain on Sam's face, awarded a point to Devin. This point was not usually given, but considering the effective blows that had been delivered to the leg twice in a row, he had no choice but to grant the point. The strategy Devin had adopted for this fight left Sam with few options. She wanted to engage in close combat, but she was concerned that exactly what had just happened would occur. Now, her only chance to do something in this fight was to be faster. When the referee saw that Sam was ready, he nodded and shouted, Ready. Fight. This time, Sam took the lead, quickly approaching Devin, who assumed a defensive posture and received the blows quite easily. At this point, Devin's expression was fierce, and she looked at her opponent with no mercy, giving it her all. Now, when Sam thought she had the advantage, she launched a kick to Devin's face. However Devin, alert to unexpected attacks, raised her guard and received the blow. No point, block. But at that very moment when the referee mentioned that there was no point, Devin, who had been attentive from the beginning, slid and knocked Sam down, hitting her on her only supporting foot. Thud. And as if that weren't enough, Devin advanced and planted a straight punch to Sam's stomach, who wanted to get up quickly from the ground. Point. Dash, in the distance, was stunned. Apparently, he hadn't been the only one who had improved by leaps and bounds in martial arts. It seemed that Devin wasn't much weaker than he was, at least in a combat demonstration. The young face of Sam was twisted in pain. In the next second, she got up, but at that moment, her father's voice sounded behind her. Time, take some time, please. Daniel, on the other side, clenched his teeth at how hard the fight was for his daughter Sam. He couldn't keep watching as she was struggling in the fight, and immediately requested time to emotionally support her, and give her that fighting spirit she needed. She's very strong, Dad. Sam said as she leaned towards her father. Strength is not only in the physical. Remember perfectly that the chances of winning are only in the heart. Do you remember how I won my first tournament? Sam nodded and said, I remember that kick perfectly, then, you can try it. Daniel hoped his daughter would win, but as she ended up injured in her leg, he had no choice but to wish her the best luck to do what she did best. Remember to clear your mind. On the other side, Devin had returned with Dash and Mr. Kim, who immediately said, finish the fight with a double front kick. She probably won't be able to advance towards you with her injured leg, so take advantage of that and knock her down. Devin nodded and said, she's not so bad, it's just that the injury to her leg is much more painful than she can endure, and limits her movements. That's not your problem. All you should worry about is winning the fight, even if you have to be cruel. That's how martial arts are in tournaments where everyone's pride matters. What you need to do is not despise your opponent and always go all out, even if they are weaker than you. Devin nodded. She knew that's how Dash had described her a long time ago. She could be aggressive but would never be cruel to people. 
That was something she couldn't help, but she also had to know that within an official match, it was a mistake to show mercy, especially in a final where she could still lose. Looking at Daniel talking to his daughter, Dash signaled Devin and said, Hey, do you remember the kick we analyzed recently from Daniel LaRusso? With which he won his first tournament. Devin nodded, showing that she remembered. I have a slight feeling that Sam will try to replicate that kick. Do you know how to counter it, right? Dash asked, giving his friend a cunning look. With a faster kick. Go for it then. At the moment Sam and Devin returned to the center for the final showdown, if any would do what was needed to win. Ready? Fight. Imitating her father's posture in that tournament, Sam defiantly looked at Devin, who walked back and forth without raising her guard. As far as Sam knew, the kick she was about to use was called Made Jiri, a front kick in understandable terms, but it involved a jump and therefore added final power. Will you get tired if you don't move forward? Devin measured her distance and began taking small jumps while watching Sam, who didn't move a muscle. Just when Sam thought she needed to change her tactics, Devin advanced toward her. As she prepared to jump and deliver a kick to her opponent's face, Sam also launched a high kick. Devin's kick was one of the ones she had practiced the most for months, so immediately, as everyone was excited to know which kick would land first, they were left astonished. In a single moment, Sam's kick, carrying momentum, was countered with a powerful clean kick from Devin, sending her to the ground. Point, winner. As everyone witnessed these incredible kicks executed by each of the competitors, the audience erupted in cheers, and those waiting for a winner began to shout. Dash, who saw how Devin had handled the fight, felt incredibly happy. He had never thought he would be in a situation like this, and all he did was run towards her and congratulate her. The champion of the women's division, Devin Lee. Shouted the announcer, immediately handing Devin her trophy as Dash embraced her with excitement. Mr. Kim, do you have room for another trophy in your hands? Devin smiled as her eyes teared up and handed her trophy to the one who had taught her martial arts. I'll try not to drop them, Mr. Kim said with a more evident smile on his face. He was not someone who showed his emotions frequently, but today was a day to celebrate. In an instant, both had emerged as winners, even if they had faced many difficulties along the way. No one is given prizes these days, so if the students of Sakura Bushido have won both championships, it's because of the effort put into each day of training. Perhaps many don't understand this, they may think it's the dojo's work that does a good job teaching. However, any dojo is not better than another, even if you consider their teachers. What truly matters is the student's dedication to continuous learning, and that is unchangeable. Amidst the celebrations, Devin walked towards Sam, who was with her father, and said, It was an incredible fight, but I don't think this is the best version of you or me. I'll be here next year, so it would be a real luxury for us to face each other again, stronger than ever. Daniel smiled at Devin's humility and said, Well, I can't be sure of that since it depends on Sam, but we'll find out in the next tournament. Sam, who had been crying until recently, looked at Devin and asked, How long have you been training? A little over half a year. It's not much, but I work so hard that I don't remember anything other than school, karate, or Dash wanting to go to China. Devin, who was about to leave, stopped upon hearing a voice. What's happening in China? Daniel was surprised to hear that. Is Frederick's son going to China to study? He's going to a kung fu tournament. It will be in a few months, so I guess he won't have much time to recover, or maybe he will. I'm not very sure. Well, Mr. LaRusso, it was a pleasure to meet you, and it's truly an honor to know that you've never given up on the things you're passionate about. Devin bowed slightly to Daniel, who could only smile at the words of this girl who once seemed an unstoppable competitor. With the tournament over, the name of the previously unknown dojo spread by word of mouth, and many who had become interested in karate, thought it wouldn't be a bad idea to send their children there. But Dash had a much more exclusive idea about the dojo he wanted to run. Quantity is often not good, and he didn't plan on training someone who wouldn't belong to Sakura Bushido for the rest of their life. Daniel LaRusso is an example of his idea about the kung fu that his dojo would impart. Many would learn karate, and others would train in different disciplines before fully mastering the kung fu taught after completing the guide classes. As Devin approached her parents, who gave her a gift, Dash signaled to them, as they had agreed to go for a meal after the tournament had ended. But unexpectedly, the parents of each champion made a proposal that left at least Dash speechless. First, we'll make a stop at the hospital so that both of you are thoroughly examined. We can't go to eat until you are properly taken care of. That's an absolute no for me, what's your problem with hospitals? This time, Devin wasn't on Dash's side upon learning about the injury on his head, and the need to be fully recovered, if he planned to participate in a new tournament scheduled for a few months later. I hate hospitals after Devin and I watched that horror movie marathon. Dash muttered, earning a punch in the side from Devin after everyone looked at her. 
That's not an option if you want to go to China to participate in another tournament while injured. Elena, at this time, had no plans to negotiate with her son, he had to visit the hospital without any objections. Well, am I the only one? Dash glanced at his friend as if he intended to drag her into his suffering. Yes, obviously. Devon fell completely healthy, except for some soreness in her knuckles, parts of her body that had been hit, and hands that had been struck more frequently while raising her defenses. Of course not. Zoe looked at her daughter sternly, as if she wouldn't tolerate any objections. Why? Zack intervened in the conversation and said, Mr. Hale has decided to make reservations for both of you to be thoroughly checked after the tournament. We won't accept any no as an answer. After a brief half-hearted discussion about whether visiting the hospital was necessary, at least for Devon, everyone headed to the hospital in a single van. During the journey, Dash was pondering many things about why he disliked revisiting a hospital. Since he has memories, at least those not covered by the new ones he has been creating since he woke up in this world, he has bad memories of his experiences in the hospital. His breathing became difficult even when he was near one, the bad luck Dash believed he had in these places, was the result of all the bad things that had happened and yielded in this place. Truth be told, he doesn't know if his avoidance is the right way to deal with these bad feelings. Often, that hidden pain inside can be healed if things are faced very slowly or directly. He hasn't been living a life filled with things he always wanted to do for long, so it wasn't the time, at least for him, to overcome that pain he occasionally has to face. Well, we're here. Frederick said after getting out of the van. Will you tell me why you lie to your parents about the hospital? Devin walked alongside Dash and asked why he didn't open up to his parents. I don't know. I've been away from these pointless worries since I was a kid, and now bringing them up isn't something that would be convenient for them. You know I hate hospitals because of my nightmares, but for someone else other than you, that wouldn't make sense. Dash couldn't open up to his parents about his history with them before waking up here. Although, in a way, they hadn't done anything, it's difficult to face it after having lived through the worst part that only he remembers. If in one of your lives a man kills your parents and that same man becomes your neighbor, would you look at him with a smile? That's Dash's issue with his parents, he couldn't erase that pain overnight, and maybe he never can. It's not strange to think of it that way, but those are just his own terrible battles that he should fight, as telling them to anyone, no matter who, would be a madness he doesn't even want to think about. You should be thankful you have a friend who supports you in all your problems. What would you do without me? Devin tousled Dash's hair as they headed towards the first medical checkup. I don't know. Have you thought about what you would be doing if you didn't train in Kung Fu? Maybe you wouldn't be the youngest champion of the annual Valley Tournament, that sounds good. Devin said, looking at the surroundings that were quite empty. Throughout the process, Dash couldn't help but feel suffocated. All these checkups ended up exhausting his mind that was happy until recently. The things he had to do here ended up making him have a bad day after an incredible victory. And as it would take a while, everyone left except for a driver whom Dash's father had arranged to take them home once they were done with the medical examinations. I can't believe they're leaving us. You have a reason not to trust your parents much if they treat you like this. Devon sat next to a vending machine while drinking an energy drink. I've gotten used to it. Dash replied with a touch of insensitivity as he took out something to drink. Devon raised her eyebrows. Just as she was about to respond, Dash said, haven't you been injured? In the end, I ended up with some bruises. I'm afraid it will get worse tomorrow I thought it would happen, but I didn't think there would be so many. I hope to recover by the time I go to China for the tournament. After hearing those words, Devin looked at Dash's arms, and that blow to his face, that ended up opening his forehead, thinking it was normal after having so many fights. In any combat sport, it's normal to have bruises, there's no way to escape them if you receive blows frequently. Still, she also had some bruises that weren't very visible, but did appear on her skin. So, after receiving anti-inflammatories and creams for the marks, both turned out to be very well, so they returned home to join the family. They had agreed to eat together and spend the weekend, so since Dash's house was located in a private residential area, it was much more comfortable to spend the days for everyone. In the car, Devon looked at her hands and remembered the recent confrontation she had. Will we continue to climb in Kung Fu and Karate? While Devon was thinking about how much better she could become, Dash's question pulled her out of her thoughts. What do you mean? Dash looked at her and said, There are a couple competitions, so as long as we get older, we could participate as a team, you and I representing our dojo. Doesn't that sound amazing? It seems like you've been looking into it. To what extent do you want to go? National competitions, but for that, we must improve much more and make our dojo recognized to have a place to attribute our reputation. Dash said as he closed his eyes and rested. Today had been a very tough but fun day. 
He just hopes that this fun never ends. Oh my god Devin, look at my beautiful face. How battered it is from that savage punch. Dash exclaimed as he entered the guest room where Devin had spent the night. Dash's sudden shout woke up Devin, and when she opened her eyes, she saw that strange face in front of her. Then, due to her grogginess, she asked, who are you? Oh I thought I woke up a bit swollen, but for you not to recognize me, that hurt a bit. But never mind, should we use makeup to cover this embarrassing battle scar? Dash's face was very close to Devin's, who had just woken up. My whole body hurts, I thought I hadn't been hit as hard as it actually happened. Devin sat up in bed then turned her head to see how Dash had sprawled out next to her, staring at the ceiling. She was regaining composure after he had burst into her room recklessly. In truth, she was the only one who could see that side of Dash, as she was the closest thing he had to a relationship beyond just being friends. No one got bored of each other, which was something very special, because achieving this in a friendship at a young age is rare. Many children at a certain age tend to disdain relationships or feel embarrassed by insignificant things, but they, being more mature than kids their age, didn't care about those things. Dash had considered acting a bit more in line with his age, but he really couldn't because in front of Devin, he didn't want to show anything other than his true self. Shouldn't you put some ice on? Devin asked while looking at her cell phone. I don't want to Dash didn't move from his position, the truth was that his body hurt because his excellent defense had received many stronger blows than he could handle, and that was due to his small stature. No matter how good he was at karate or kung fu, the blows from people bigger than him up to a certain age, would always cause him harm, something he had to keep in mind. Hey, do you think we'll become famous or something? Dash looked at Devin and saw her watching a video of a cat dancing strangely. You know the chances of karate becoming famous again are if we go viral if someone uploads our fights on the internet, which is unlikely. Besides, why do you want to be famous? To make money. Dash looked at Devin and remembered that in these years, the children of the internet were becoming more and more prominent. Do you need money? Devin didn't understand Dash's point in this case. Listen, maybe we don't need money now since our upbringing is our parents' obligation, but we must keep in mind that it won't always be like that, and it's good to have insurance in case we get kicked out of everything that wouldn't happen, but we must be prepared. And do you think the best way is to be famous? That's not as appealing as you're dreaming it to be. You can't even go to the bathroom without being photographed, what good is that besides having money? Upon hearing that question, Dash thought Devin had a point and said, we should upload videos to the internet, put on chicken masks, and show others some of our best moves. Devin thought about it and believed it wasn't a bad idea to spend the little time they had outside of training, so she said, do you think anyone will watch us? Dash nodded and said, just think how amazing it would be 10 years from now when someone sees kids showing kung fu or karate moves and in the future winning a major national competition, that would be insane. Dash said as he got up from the bed. Well, but you'll have to join the school debate club. Devin smiled when she knew she had a weapon to lure Dash into one of the most satisfying clubs she wanted to belong to. Well, but I won't participate on the side that doesn't seem right. Are you okay with that? Yes, but better go get some ice. When Devin saw Dash leave the room, she was about to wash her face when she heard a shout. Dash Hale, didn't you put the ice I gave you last night? It melted, mom, the heat was so intense that I even think I passed out last night, then I'll have to take you to the hospital again for them to check that bump. This is like a trophy, you shouldn't panic and take me to a hospital where all they'll give me are anti-inflammatories. Dash's shouts in defense of not going to the hospital were so loud that they were heard throughout the house. Devin, who shook her head at the arguments, murmured, you're the one needed on the debate team, very few could have such a good argument about the topics we wander off to. The afternoon yesterday after coming from the hospital wasn't anything remarkable, both spent it resting while the adults talked about many other boring things that they didn't care about. Dash had invited her to judge the console, and at some point, he fell asleep without putting ice on the wound on his head. For that same reason, he had woken up with his face slightly swollen and purple. During the rest of the day, many things were discussed that would be taken into account for the flood of applications to the Sakura Bushido Dojo, and the conclusion was that both sought quality over quantity. Not everyone has the willpower to carry out the exercises done at Sakura Bushido, so to avoid seeing new faces that would disappear the next day, the rules for entry would be much stricter. After that crazy morning, Dash spent the day complaining to Devin, who spent her time taking pictures of his embarrassing mark as a champion, having his reputation as the next dragon warrior affected. The story of a legend according to Dash, to which Devin replied that it was for the documentary of his future legend. A hot summer month passed in the blink of an eye. During this month, Dash continued training with even more dedication in secret, while recovering from all his injuries. 
Thanks to his excessive care, the injuries he gained in his previous tournament fully healed, and a wound on his forehead closed completely. Throughout this time, Dash had been accustomed to using all the kung fu techniques he knew, not limiting himself to just karate for the tournament. After resuming training, Dash could clearly feel that amid the sharp pain, the tenacity and strength of his body were rapidly increasing. Dash loved that feeling because he knew he was advancing quickly in his training, and as a result, his body was developing even more. Pump. 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 Hoo-hoo, are you exhausted? You must know perfectly well that you're not prepared to dominate the China tournament. They're born learning kung fu, and you've been at it for less than a year. Do you think you have the talent they don't? No, Sensei Kim. Dash shouted as he continued striking the training dummy. From now on, you'll call me just Mr. Kim. Remember, however far you go will be solely because of your effort, Mr. Kim said while observing the effort Dash put into the new exercise. Are you listening to Lee? Yes Mr. Kim. Devon, by Dash's side, sweated profusely as she improved her kicks with each attempt. After the previous warm-up, Dash went to the backyard to first train by doing some push-ups before starting to strike imaginary foes around him. You've asked me to be tougher in training, so from now on, I'll make your bodies bleed without you dying in the attempt, Mr. Kim said as he watched Dash and Devin comply with the new training he had devised. In a week, the dojo will open its doors to students who want to learn from both of you and me. So, I must ensure you understand the importance of this training, and how necessary it is not to overexert your bodies. Dash and Devin wanted to increase their training to keep improving. Winning two tournaments was not their goal for the future, they knew they had to keep improving to remain unbeatable in combat. In the spacious backyard, strategically arranged for training, a shadow firmly supported his body using only his thumbs, while his feet floated on the ground's surface. The only sounds were his breaths and the slight creaking of the muscles as he moved up and down using his arms. Sweat soaked his entire clothing as new waves of sweat continued falling to the ground, forming a small puddle. Hoo hoo with each movement, his body pumped blood, further defining his muscles before he stopped training. In this training, every muscle in his body was being used to the fullest. About 10 minutes later, Dash finally ended up exhausted. As he lay on the ground, he tried to recover his breath quickly, while an extreme sensation of pain slowly spread through his body. So tired Dash gritted his teeth as his heart beat rapidly, and his hands shook. He tried to lift his body and recover as quickly as possible to stabilize his breathing. Without removing his clothes, he walked to the shower to wash off all the sweat. After showering, Dash walked to a folding ice tub that had been prepared for him, and immersed himself in it, feeling the coldness freezing his bones. This was the only way to recover quickly after training to exhaustion. He didn't do it always since it wasn't recommended for health, but every now and then, it was allowed, erasing exhaustion this way. Today, with the possible enrollment of new apprentices, two women were hired to take care of cleaning in areas where Mr. Kim couldn't. Everything was ready to open the dojo to students who wanted to bear the Sakura tree shield. While Dash was in the cold water, this stimulating sensation was what he needed to feel more in tune with his goals. There's nothing better than a good shower after rigorous training Dash lazily floated in the ice-filled tub, currently having only the strength to go with the water's flow. It felt as if every cell in his body was angrily screaming at him. Still, these protests of pain gradually subsided as Dash's body cooled further. At this point, all he wanted to do was close his eyes and enjoy the recovery process. Just as the minutes passed, his slow breathing became more active, and after a moment more, he emerged from the folding tub. The numbness in his body made Dash stop feeling pain, and he came out with his body shaking, as he walked slowly back to the shower to stabilize his body heat. After following the routine, Dash dried his body and changed into casual clothes while walking to a more relaxed resting area. Did you torture yourself in that brutal way again? Devin asked as she sat beside him. It's not that bad, it's just part of the triumph process. After hearing that, Dash took the gummy bag from Devin and began eating them. While eating these gummies, Dash looked at Devin and asked, Now that we're entering high school, do you have any idea what it will be like to make new friends? As if you're everyone's friend. The only one you talk to besides me is the guy who gets bullied in school and the training dummy. Devin rolled her eyes and snatched the gummy bag. I'm a bit serious, many people consider me boring, I'm not so sure about that. By the way, I bought some movies that haven't been released in theaters, and are about many things I can't watch alone. So, you have to accompany me and be my partner for this day. Devin, who loved marathon watching strange movies, always dragged Dash into audiovisual torture. The last movie we watched was about a giant cockroach eating people. Are you sure this time you've made good selections? Dash looked into Devin's eyes and questioned her with suspicion. 
Of course, I don't always pick the same garbage as usual. Since Dash should manage to win the tournament at such a young age, his crazy training speed began to stabilize again. Although he still tortured himself with new techniques and things he shouldn't be demanding from his body yet, he knew that the best way to improve now would be to maximize his happiness and flexibility. Consequently, in the following days, Dash seemed more relaxed than before. When he had free time, he practiced almost perfectly the Kung Fu combat stance. However, he understood that if he exercised too much, he would end up harming himself. Therefore, he decided to familiarize his body, much like Mr. Hank did with Dree in his training. Having grasped the secret of Kung Fu long ago, Dash could now feel each of his movements, and have absolute control over his body. One month until we travel to China, I'll be there a week earlier to get familiar with the environment, Dash said while lying on his bed, talking on the phone with his companion in the Kung Fu competition. I'm more than ready to participate in the Kung Fu tournament, and I invited mine. It was probably more complicated than usual due to the language barrier. So, did you mention to your master what I told you last time? Dash asked, contemplating whether he could get Dree into his dojo to establish an affiliation. Mr. Han said he didn't care about the affiliation. But are you sure there will be any difference whether we're in the same affiliation or not? Dree asked, still confused by Dash's request from some time ago. Of course, it's essential. You must think that the exposure my dojo, with my father's help, could achieve might increase. This would give Mr. Han the opportunity to have an affiliation sponsored by Sakura Bushido. That would mean he could have a Kung Fu Dojo where he teaches students, just like he does with you. Dash knew that Dree would win the Kung Fu tournament if he didn't intervene in this story. However, he didn't want to stay on the sidelines, as it was a very significant tournament where he would prove himself and his Kung Fu. For this reason, he wanted to enter the tournament. Thinking more about the future, it would be good for his dojo to have a branch in China, where Mr. Han could be the master, and teach his Kung Fu to students who wanted him as their teacher. This could mean a lot in the future, as if Dree continues with Kung Fu, the influence of Sakura Bushido wouldn't be confined to just one place. Thanks to that, they would be considered for more tournaments and competitions. Doesn't it sound tempting for your master not to work in that residential building anymore? He could be a full-time Kung Fu master, and that could significantly improve his classes, Dash said while thinking a bit more about the future. The Sakura Bushido logo is amazing. Master Han said that since we're learning Kung Fu, the tree could be black, while for karate, it could be pink, as you sent us the samples. Everything is ready for the competition. While thinking about his personal growth and that of the dojo, Dash believed that this was the best plan he had come up with in a long time to have even more connection with the world of real Kung Fu, and get closer to those competitions, while also considering continuing with karate. So, I'll continue with training, and we'll see each other a week before, Dash. Remember to come in top condition because the air in China is heavier. Don't blame me, I warned you. Dri said after Dash said goodbye, and the call ended. At this point, Dash pondered what to do with the dojo he wanted to open to expand the knowledge of true training to boys and girls of his age. In normal situations, the dojo serves the student, but in this case, the student will serve the dojo, and should be cherished as a second home. Belonging to Sakura Bushido means being part of something great, everyone should be proud to belong to the dojo where warriors are created and fighters are forged, improving both physically and mentally through hard work. In Daniel LaRusso's story, he once abandoned his master's teachings because he wanted to prepare for the competition. Due to this, he joined Cobra Kai under the deception of a certain drug-addicted teacher and more. This made it clear that belonging to a place is not always safe. Sakura Bushido will not be an amusement house for curious people. Members will be taught and required to follow a series of doctrines, so that, as they belong to the dojo, they receive more benefits. In other words, at the beginning, the monthly subscription may be expensive, but as the months and years go by, these classes can be reduced tenfold in price, which is incredible. For more experienced members, they could play the role of substitutes to instruct new students, and they might even get paid. Competitions would be the most crucial, as from them, a student could earn money if they end up as winners. If all these benefits are laid out on the table, if the expenses are too costly, the dojo could reach an agreement with the student to extend the debt until it can be paid without extra charges. This would imply that joining Sakura Bushido is not for fame, but because each student will seek glory. On a massive screen, two figures were engaged in combat in a martial arts arena, and what made it even more impressive, was that the fighters were children, displaying an exceptionally high level of kung fu in various styles. Good lord, that's more brutal than the karate tournament Devin, who was watching the fight alongside Dash, was impressed. That's why I have to train more. 
Although it's true that I won't become stronger, at least I'll have the confidence to fight like that when I enter the tournament, Dash said, munching on popcorn and watching videos he had found about the upcoming competition in a few weeks. As he contemplated his training, Dash's eyebrows furrowed as he delved deeper into his combat level. For less than a year, he had trained enough to win a high-level karate tournament where most of the fighters were older. However, this also came with consequences, such as injuries that had only now fully healed. Moreover, Dash still didn't feel prepared to fight at the level of the talented warriors Tree had defeated, maybe with talent, luck, or some other factor. In general, even though Dash had talent, he didn't want to be arrogant, and believe that he would win a tournament where, if he faced someone like Cheng, he would suffer a lot. I must find a way to be on the other side of the choice, Dash sighed softly as a contemplative expression appeared on his face. Based on his current displayed strength, he could defeat most of the fighters in the tournament that Tree had won in the known storyline. However, those fights wouldn't be easy to win, because he wouldn't be facing warriors who were overconfident in combat. But he knew he wasn't as weak as he perceived himself to be, so in the end, he would have to devise a plan to become much more skilled in kung fu, and have full confidence in his abilities when the time came. Dash just as Dash was deep in thought, Devon's voice sounded beside him. He turned to look at her, and she, who was now reviewing her homework, said, Is that tournament so important? Of course, I'll be considered the Dragon Warrior if I win. That would be my title for a year before defending it again in the same competition. After recalling the title the winner would receive, Dash filled himself with confidence again, eager to know if he would be as talented as those kids fighting in such an admirable way. Despite being very tough on his training, Dash has always had talent. After all, the hard work he has been putting in until now wouldn't be worthwhile. According to his calculations, he wouldn't lose unless he didn't fight at his maximum. Dash only needed half a year to be a top competitor in karate, which means he wasn't as bad as he thought, and could at least put on a good show in China. This was much more than Dash could have imagined before being able to move his body, so at least he was on the verge of becoming a dragon warrior. I'm not going to prove myself, I'll win and be the dragon warrior. Got it, Devon. Those kids are flying, are you sure? Devon looked at the replay of the combat, and believed they were fierce confrontations that even she didn't feel prepared for. Don't you trust me? Dash lifted his shirt and said, look at these amazing muscles, do you think this body isn't designed for combat? I don't know, but if you'll go far, I'll trust in your performance. Devon looked at Dash, who was suddenly showing off his muscles, and returned her attention to her homework. Dash's expression became serious as he sat in front of Devon and turned off the TV. Even now, the only support he expected was from his training partner, she could assess his combat level and give her honest opinion. When Devon saw Dash acting this way, she leaned her head in, and suddenly she headbutted him. Crash. Now, are you a goat? Dash shouted while holding his head in pain. Concentrate a bit on your homework. You have the level to compete, but if you keep thinking you don't, you'll only lose the confidence you have in your abilities. Even if she told him he was better than those kids, he had to feel it and accept it himself. Fine, let's finish this, and then let's practice muscle memory exercises. Dash suppressed his contemplative state and focused on the tedious task in his notebook. He didn't understand the point of the school assignment. If they already occupied most of the day, there shouldn't be tasks left to finish on weekends. By the way, I looked on the internet, and the most famous places in Beijing are the Temple of Heaven, and this is a famous temple complex from 1420, with distinctive circular buildings located in a popular park. Dash, suddenly diverting his attention from his homework, began explaining the travel plans he had devised for Devon. You're quite thoughtful. You won't take me to eat horse meat, will you? Horse meat. Dash was perplexed. Although he had never lived there, he knew that China was one of the world's main consumers of horse meat, and that's why he made those jokes to Devon. To be honest, what differences does horse meat have from others? Devon moved her pen from side to side while pondering this question. Horse meat is redder and tougher, I think well, I finished just now, as long as you finish, we can go train a bit or maybe get some ice cream. Devon walked to the bathroom to change, while Dash wondered if horse meat would be better dry. My mind is very curious, I guess this is because before, I only talked to myself about many ridiculous things. Dash murmured as he copied Devon's homework without her noticing. It's so hot Dash mumbled after Devon dragged him to buy ice cream. Stop complaining. You train in worse conditions without Mr. Kim noticing, and your parents giving you permission. Do you dare to complain now that you're walking a bit under the sun? Devon looked at Dash and shook her head as they searched for a shady spot to sit. During this day they took as a break before the opening of the Sakura Bushido Dojo, Dash felt excited that many more students were about to venture into what was the true pinnacle of martial arts and competitive spirit within this place. 
things hadn't been exciting since winning the tournament with Devin, so Dash needed to do some other things besides training to distract himself. It's not like technology was very advanced now to find ways to pass the time. Moreover, Dash's goal was to make the most of his body, so he needed to try to spend the days he took off from training, as a way to take advantage of things he could now do that he hadn't done before. Should we adopt a cat to live in the dojo? Dash looked at Devin while biting his chocolate popsicle and asked her. Cats shed a lot of fur. If you're not willing to take care of it all day, it's better not to adopt a pet. I hate that everyone has the right to adopt pets, not everyone is prepared to be responsible. Upon hearing those words from Devin, Dash sighed and said, but that way, fewer pets would be adopted, and more would be killed. What do you think would be better in some specific cases? Devin thought about it and was momentarily without an answer. It was true that animals that were not adopted were killed because they couldn't find a home. It might sound cruel, but that's the harsh reality. Nowadays, people prefer a purebred cat without considering that many animals are waiting to be adopted before a decision is made to end their lives. When Devin pondered this question, she didn't know what to answer. She didn't want to sound insensitive, but sometimes, death for pets that would suffer more is the best option in every way. It's a difficult issue, isn't it? Dash smiled slightly and, as someone who had touched on death, said, Dogs and cats are not animals that can survive in nature. They survive thanks to humans who take care of them, and for that reason, they cannot be left free. Devon learned something new today, if it were a debate topic, it would clarify many things and leave others unclear. But they weren't debating now, they were having a simple conversation to pass the time. Tomorrow the dojo opens. Do you want a nickname? Black Widow would suit you fantastically, and they could call me the Dragon Warrior once I win the tournament in China, Dash said as he stretched and walked back. That sounds very cheesy, Devin muttered as she followed Dash, who was getting farther away. While both walked through the quiet streets near a supermarket, Dash, from the corner of his eye, noticed a figure that had been following him for some time, and this worried him a little. Dash's lively gaze dimmed, replaced by a more serious one where jokes were not allowed. If he was being followed, it might not be by good people, since he hadn't made enemies who remembered him. Well, no one with the capabilities to send someone to harm him. Even the idea of something like that is unlikely, but to be sure, he had to do something. Don't you want a burger before we go back? Dash asked with his usual emotionally charged look, so that Devin wouldn't suspect anything. Are you treating? Devin didn't have much money with her, so to avoid spending what was left for the taxi, she asked Ash with a slightly interested look. Of course, take a hundred dollars, order the combos while I go to the bathroom, Dash said as he disappeared from his friend's sight. Devin didn't notice anything strange and ran to the line to order burgers at the restaurant inside the mall. Meanwhile, Dash, who had been aware of who was following him, disappeared from his field of vision, and suddenly, he sat on a bench when he saw that figure passing by in a hurry. What does that man want? When Dash looked at the man who had been following him, he discovered that it was the sensei of Kaska Karate, the same sensei as Marcus and Silva, who had hit him in the forehead illegally and with hatred. Can I help you sir? Dash, who had seen a couple of police officers walking not far from him, approached the man calmly and asked. Santiago was surprised, turned around and said, You're smarter than I thought, that will make things easier, I would like to know more about what you're thinking, but I'm not interested in any of your business, so if you stop bothering me and my friend, I won't tell the police over there that you've been following me and my friend as a thank you. Even if it were city, Dash wouldn't trust anyone he hadn't interacted with before. But as he didn't want to create any scandal, he wanted to end things through conversation. I just wanted to give you something. This is my business card let's say I'm a fight trainer as well as a karate master. Now that I've closed the dojo, I'll focus on one job, but before I go, I wanted to give you this business card in case someday in the future, you want to fight and, by the way, earn money. Don't forget to call me. Santiago handed Dash a metal card before leaving. How are you sure I'll call you in a few years? Dash asked, looking at the card Santiago had left. Everything in life changes, maybe you won't, but if you do, we could both make a lot of money, Santiago said as he waved his hand and walked away. Looking at the card in his hand, Dash wanted to throw it away, since it was obviously related to illegal fights, but without thinking much about it, he decided to keep it and return to Devon before she noticed that something was wrong. What a strange man Dash murmured, a bit confused. What he didn't know was that Santiago had chosen him just to have something in the future. If Dash keeps entering, he knows perfectly when a man would become a predator. Have you read the terms and conditions to join this dojo? These requirements are insane, how do they plan to find members if the requirements are so stringent? A boy with glasses approached and said, don't panic. If you can't handle something like that, you should prepare yourself before even attempting to join this dojo. 
it would save you a lot of trouble, since those who don't meet these requirements are probably not fit to learn karate. The boy in the yellow hoodie was named Victor. His curious gaze was questionable as he was only here to assess the facilities and the internet speed. By the time the young people had arrived, they were all led to the open space where each began gathering in groups and inspecting the large facilities of this place. The price is very high, but knowing that it decreases after a few months of continued study, my mother immediately sent me here. However, the monthly subscription prices are still insane. Said a boy while looking at the two trophies on a shelf, trophies won by the only two students of this dojo. Does anyone have replays of the fights? I'm still amazed when I think about how the guy named Dash smashed Silva's head, even when he was the one who attacked first unexpectedly. Yes, I think I have a copy. Alright, everyone, gather. A loud voice came from the other end of the large room, and an older man came out in a karate uniform. He stood in front of everyone and surveyed the surroundings. Is it the sensei of this dojo? Yes, that's Mr. Kim that everyone is talking about, is he single? My mother sent me here to find out. Maybe he'll become my next father Mr. Kim, who had good hearing, frowned upon hearing such wishful comments and muttered, a bunch of monkeys for the love of God, none of them will pass the test Ash proposed initially. It was obvious that the requirements were high. Before money, one had to be in good physical condition to save months of training, and prevent people of all ages who didn't meet these training routines, from wasting their money and quitting after a week. For those who accepted, they were given a training routine to build the minimum condition to start learning karate, and for those who wanted more in-depth classes, there was kung fu. Alright, gather in a circle, and before you decide to join us, you must learn some necessary things that will be taught in this place. For now, Mr. Kim started by explaining the goal of this dojo, and what everyone would learn in this place. Listen carefully. Mr. Kim, who ended up here as a mentor for kids wanting to learn martial arts, said, First, we will not only teach you to fight in Sakura Bushido, but we also instill discipline. Everyone is here because of the rumors about the two winners from a month ago, but not everyone is aware of the sacrifice behind reaching that level. Mr. Kim had seen Dash and Devon's dedication, so he reminded everyone interested in joining. You will learn about responsibility, respect, unity, and how far you are willing to go to gain power. Everyone is welcome to this dojo, but remember there is a set of exercises you must complete for a month, before deciding to join this place. For those with no doubt, then fine, sign up and bring your parents' authorization by tomorrow. After everyone relaxed, they listened attentively to the sensei of this place and nodded. Many of them were in poor physical condition, so before learning kicks and such, they would have to build a foundation. When their body's foundation is ready, everyone could learn martial arts. Many who were here left but not without taking a copy of the exercise routine, and after a month, if they could survive that exercise, they would show up here to learn. Among all those who left, 14 boys aged 10 to 15 stayed, and they were all confident in their ability to easily perform the exercise written on the sheet. Some were not sure, but they had enough money to stay here for months, and train under the supervision of the dojo sensei. Alright, it seems everyone has made a decision, so I'm glad. Mr. Kim said, looking at these brave kids willing to give it a try. First and foremost, we'll focus on your flexibility, agility, and, if possible, endurance. Everyone in formation, side by side, and separate according to the mats laid out. I have a question. Said the boy in the yellow hoodie, raising his hand. Go ahead. What do you teach here? Kung Fu. Mr. Kim said as the people around filled with surprise. Kung Fu is the fusion of many martial arts, it's up to you whether you want to focus only on karate or other disciplines that will be taught here. Said Mr. Kim as he looked at the students who remained in the vicinity. I've never heard of that, I guess it's something incredible. Well, now the test will begin to see if you can withstand these workouts, and determine at what level you are before I personally start teaching you. Just as everyone was pondering Mr. Kim's words, the back door opened, and Dash, along with Devin, entered after a short warm-up routine. Are you done? Mr. Kim asked with a glance at the new students. Yes Mr. Kim. Then teach your new classmates about the dojo. Before they even think about joining this place, they must learn a bit about how it works. Dojos or training sites have a specific function. To train those who visit frequently, and each place operates differently. In a dojo, there were many norms and rules that a new student is unaware of, so it's prudent to teach them even before officially joining this place. Am I in charge, or are you doing it? Dash asked Devin, who was at his side. You're good at talking to people, I'll let you do the honors. Devin didn't want to pay attention to the students who might not end up being part of this place. Dash nodded and stepped forward to the young people, saying, My name is Dash Hale, and all of you are in Sakura Bushido. It may sound like something you already know, 
but I would like you to be aware of what it means to be part of this place that I Devon and our mentor dedicate time to. For now, the essential thing you need to know is that in the Jiseki, which is the right side of this large space, sit the students with higher rank or experience, while the Shimaseki is the left side where those with less rank or experience sit. After saying this, Dash was brief and concluded, as for the division you will train in, I assume it will be Karate. That's why this place is focused on that. If it helps, the opposite side of where the instructors sit is where the students will sit according to the belt they wear around their waists when they get their uniform. When Dash finished explaining all this, Mr. Kim, who didn't want to waste any more time, nodded and said, You start with your routines, I'll take care of training these students. We'll see tomorrow if they show up. After he spoke, he pointed to the training machines, and everyone wearing exercise appropriate clothing nervously stood up. Does anyone have any other questions they want to openly express? In the dojo, no one asked another question, so Mr. Kim began the training routine. After Mr. Kim finished speaking, Dash walked to the training machines to measure his strikes. In less than 10 minutes, the excited young people who had entered were sweating after just doing warm-up exercises. Nevertheless, none wanted to stop, and only after another 5 minutes, everyone had finished the exercises. This is insane, we'll end up dead before the day is over. Muttered the boy who only wanted to know the internet quality, but ended up being part of this training. My name is Mateo, my mother wanted me to be part of piano classes, but I prefer to cut off a finger than endure those strict classes where all I would do is learn to play, Mateo wiped the sweat from his forehead as he said that. Well, you can call me Adam, and no, we wouldn't be friends if either of us quits this place, said Adam, who, after catching his breath, looked into the distance as Dash and Devin kept hitting the training dummies. How long will it take for us to be like them? I don't know, but what they teach in this place looks promising. Adam was convinced of the quality of this site, and as for money, that wouldn't be any kind of problem, as, to be honest, it wasn't anything elevated. For many, it might be complicated, but there are certainly people who don't have to think about how much they will spend each day, since the wealth they enjoy, has had no limits from an early age. After finishing that training, Mr. Kim began showing them stances and guards, and that's where their training stopped. There were too many things they had to learn, but if they are here tomorrow, that means within a week they might still be part of Sakura Bushido. It seems there are only 15, what do you think? Dash asked as he wiped the sweat with a white towel. Half of them will drop out, not everyone is prepared and willing to give up video games like you did, Devon said, having been clear about this when she initiated the opening of this place. Dash said nothing as he thought similarly to her. In normal situations, not many are willing to endure physical suffering unless they genuinely love something. For Dash, it was different because he had always been hungry to be strong. The need to sweat to continually improve and stop being weak was something that consumed his mind every day in that hospital. Train, sweat, sleep, and train again were the only things he had been doing before the karate tournament. Now his routine was calmer, he spent time outside the dojo with Devon, since he also wanted to experience other things besides training. As for Devon, she is a special girl as she had become interested in martial arts, and everything she had achieved was not due to a small interest. She had trained as much as Dash, so her merit was equally significant, even greater than his. If he hadn't been sick, if he hadn't envied everyone with a healthy body, maybe Dash wouldn't be living his life this way. But there was no such thought, only admiration for his friend's strength. While Dash was thinking about all this, his own fighting style was slowly changing. He had been following the Northern Dragon Kung Fu routine, but he wanted to go beyond those defensive movements. Throughout this time, he had focused on quick attacks using his flexibility and small body. But now he knew he would be facing powerful students who were no joke, so he had to evolve his Kung Fu drastically, to aspire to be a winner. At this point, Dash wanted to win everything fairly. In this life he had to live, even if it's in a familiar world, he has to strive hard to achieve something like others, so he would fight fairly for the things he wanted to achieve in this life. In life, nothing was given for free, everyone, without exception, had to crawl to the top of a mountain to get the things they wanted. When Dash realized that one was born with a story that unfolded as decisions were made, he believed it was all due to his burning desire to prove himself. Will I focus on my kicks and punches, I might at least make it to the finals, Dash murmured while looking at the training dummy. At the age of 12, he was a year older than Devin, and the age three participated in that tournament in China was exactly the same as his. What bothered him a little was whether he had the talent to improve and make something of himself in that place. It's worth mentioning that he was very aware that even in that tournament, Dree didn't have the talent to defeat Cheng, who only lost due to distraction. In this new life, he might know certain things about the future, but that knowledge is only paths he could take in this life, and if he wants to be part of them, he must at least be strong. 
He was not Dre. He couldn't participate in a kung fu tournament without the talent or skills to win. If he hesitated a bit, he would lose. If he made a mistake, he would also lose. At this point, Dash surely has one path, and it is absolute concentration that he would win. If he doesn't have a winning mindset, then everything he had done until today wouldn't make much sense. I can't deny that I'd like to face the brutal Cheng in that tournament, but I still think I'm not ready, even if he trained for another year, Dash knew he wouldn't stand a chance. Perhaps these were his thoughts because he wasn't aware of where his current kung fu skills were provisionally, and that's why he strived every day to follow the routine and improve. While imagining his performance in the kung fu tournament, he was clear that his decisive battle would be against Cheng, Dri, or Wu Ping, who, in theory, would be the stars of the tournament. Even someone like Zhuang could pose a problem if he's not careful, as Dri did and got injured. After finishing his punching practice, Dash let out a long sigh. I guess it's time to stop, I don't want to overstrain my body either. The painful fatigue in his body was the torture that still reminded him every day that he had trained properly day by day. After finishing his training day, what he needed most was a shower, followed by a good meal, and a deep sleep after finishing his duties. Now that he was about to enter high school, things would change a bit, so after adapting to this new stage of his life, he would need to adjust his training to studies. This, beyond being necessary, was something Dash wanted to experience. His school life, at least until he lived long enough, would be something he needed. He had always yearned to train, study, and have an exciting life, something he could never do until now. See you tomorrow. Devon bid farewell to Dash and got into the car with her mom, who greeted before leaving. Another day is over should I consider eating more meat today. Dash muttered as he walked towards the car that had picked him up today. I'm growing very fast, I think soon I won't have to worry about many things like a child, Dash murmured as he entered the car. On the way home, there was nothing interesting to think about other than training, and whether any of the students who had come today would show up tomorrow for registration. After training for a while, Dash had gained an understanding of what the pain of good training was, and he knew that not everyone was prepared for this. Is any of my parents at home? Dash asked the woman working in the house after getting out of the car. Your parents just arrived, they are waiting for you to eat. The woman kindly responded, looking at Dash with a smile. Something new. Dash murmured as he hurried into the house. His parents were indeed good parents, much could not be demanded of them due to their work and the quality of life they were providing. Even before they died, they paid for all his needs in the hospital, something he would never forget, even though he felt somewhat distant from them. Dash, come here as soon as you put your things in the cleaning room. Frederick's voice came from the living room, to which Dash responded affirmatively. After leaving his dirty things to be cleaned, all he did was organize his dirty clothes and take off his shoes to wear something more comfortable. What's happening, father? Dash asked, a bit confused by the pressure in the surroundings. Elena smiled and said, since you are very mature, there is something we want to tell you now that we have confirmed it. Dash looked at his parents and nodded slightly, awaiting their news. It's nothing to worry about, in fact, you're going to have a brother, Frederick said with a somewhat broad smile on his face. Oh congratulations. I mean, that's incredible. Dash's response was flatter than expected in this situation, but upon hearing the tone of his voice, the overflowing emotions changed. That's good news, do you know the gender? A boy Elena smiled slightly, and after this snooze, of which Dash was aware, everyone went to eat. For Dash, this was even better because only then could he leave the role of caretaker to his younger brother. Having a brother is insane. Devon exclaimed upon hearing the news. Isn't it a good thing? Now I won't have to worry about anything, my parents' attention will be on their new son, and I'll have a freer life, Dash said, waving his hand with excitement. Don't be foolish. Haven't you thought that you'll be used as a babysitter on many different occasions? Before, they didn't have kids, so you were taken care of by others. But now, you'll have a more significant responsibility than even Kung Fu Devon's words hammered into Dash's mind, causing him to collapse in front of his friend, murmuring, that can be possible, he hadn't thought of it that way, perhaps because he never really fulfilled his role as a brother. It was then that he realized the significance of his responsibilities. Do you think my life will suddenly be filled with responsibilities? Dash wanted to cry but stopped himself, knowing that his upbringing wouldn't be different from that of his siblings, so he stopped dwelling on it. I don't think so. You'll still be focused on Kung Fu and nothing else. Devon diverted her gaze to her book, paying no attention to Dash, who was pacing nervously. How about this? Having a brother is like getting a subordinate. I'll have to invest time until he grows up, but it'll be a great help when he can do things on his own. 
it's still the same. You'll have to take care of him when your parents aren't around. And besides, there will be responsibilities at family events. Devon had no siblings but had cousins, each of whom was a little demon she didn't want to see unless it was the annual family gatherings. Well, that's inevitable. Ash calmed down and began to distract himself with other things, while Devon continued reading her book. In the past few days, things have been quiet. Dash had to stay calm because, according to Mr. Kim, he needed to recover from accumulated fatigue. To pass the time, he spent it with Devon, who also didn't have much to do. As he waited for the days until the Kung Fu tournament in China, Dash's days were calm, while he also guided the students who continued to attend the dojo with surprise. Elsewhere, two men were having a somewhat intimate conversation. Do you like the new job you've taken on eventually? My security hasn't been a problem for a long time, so you can continue teaching at the dojo I opened for my son. But remember, the choice is yours if you want to keep teaching him. In a mostly dark room, Frederick sat next to Mr. Kim, who was calmly sipping a glass of wine as they watched the fire in the fireplace. I started following him because I didn't exactly know how to fill my time after losing more than I thought I could gain in this life. I didn't think his son would be so determined to learn and put in so much effort, but he's been doing it since I started teaching him, Mr. Kim's words were calmer, his tone serene, and his gaze lost in the flames that faintly lit the room. He was once a great kung fu master who was instructed by the best. However, after falling in love with a beautiful woman who unfortunately fell ill, he set aside everything to take care of her. It was then that he met Frederick Hale, who promised to help him, as long as he worked for him under any conditions. While well, he earned money as always, after many years, Mr. Kim lost the love of his life. As a token of gratitude for the help he received, he continued working for his benefactor until he figured out what to do with his life. My son has good taste, your teachings could serve him well in the future. I'm not sure if guiding him into martial arts at such a young age was the right thing to do, Frederick hesitated at this point about that matter. His son was ordinary until recently, now his attention was on kung fu, and tournaments where he faced other competitors. The taste of victory is addictive, but someone like Dash shouldn't be so interested in it at his age. It's true that there's nothing wrong with it, but he deeply believed that for Dash, there was nothing more than training now. His trivial attention to his son dimmed as if he no longer had to worry about him, but somehow, he felt empty. Now, with a new son on the way, I feel more at ease having someone to take care of. Dash is growing up fast, and he's so mature that he only calls me when he needs something he can't handle himself. Mr. Kim smiled discreetly and said, when there's no one left for Dash to compete against, he'll stop taking the hard path and focus on things like love, friendship, and family, which are the only things that matter in life. He's right Frederick had to build his own family over a past he wanted to forget, that's how things were. Now that the dojo is starting to make a profit, everything seems to be going well. But don't you really worry that your son is joining tournaments? His free will is unique, I never had that with my father, after all. Frederick smiled and said, I didn't have it, and I always wanted it. Unless my son makes bad decisions, I prefer not to stop him from doing anything, so he's aware of what he has. If I have a foolish son, I'll have to guide him personally. But since Dash understands all these principles, I'll ignore the fact that he's become interested in contact sports. After discussing Dash's matters, the focus shifted to the tournament in China. Because Elena was pregnant, she would stay home, avoiding the long journey. Dash spoke with his father and told him that there was no need for everyone to accompany him. With Mr. Kim's assistance and Devon's family, it's more than enough support for the competition. Moreover, being such a closed event might not be fun to attend. That was also Dash's excuse to be more at ease on his trip. In the end, Dash would travel with Devon's family, who had everything paid for, and would be under Mr. Kim's care, who knew his way around China due to his previous work. Remember not to go anywhere without Mr. Kim's supervision. You must keep in mind that memorizing the name of the hotel is essential, and if you don't remember something, don't hesitate to ask first. I've got it all earned, Mom Dash replied with a serious look, as if to give more credibility to his words. On this credit card, you can buy things that you couldn't with cash. I'll be waiting for good news from your tournament. Thanks for your advice, I'll be number one I know, son, no need to ask. Frederick bid farewell to his son, whom Mr. Kim personally picked up to meet Devon's family at the airport. Isn't it too much for him to go alone? Elena looked at her son, who had disappeared from home, and asked her husband. He'll be much calmer if we don't go, you don't have to worry. Dash in the car was very excited to finally be able to go to China and meet Dre in person. For a long time, he had wondered if this trip would indeed be possible, and now he was on his way to the airport to catch that flight. No matter what happened before to get here, what matters now is that he's on his way to that tournament. His parents were very efficient with the trip. 
Not only did they pay for first-class seats, but they also booked a good hotel for him and Devin's family to stay in. Dash, over here. Devin, who was in the distance, called Dash, who was walking alongside Mr. Kim. After checking their belongings, everyone approached the line to board the plane. Do you have all your things? Devin handed Dash a piece of chewing gum due to nerves. Everything is ready, have you flown before? Only once, but I was too small to remember. After Dash arrived at the airport, some time later, they boarded the plane that Yinny arranged for China, Beijing, and he couldn't help but feel a little scared knowing that this thing would fly in a few minutes. Mr. Kim, do you really not fear planes? Behind Dash and Devon, Mr. Kim, who was sitting next to the Lees, looked to the side and shook his head. There's nothing to fear, although I prefer to travel on foot, it's understandable that these things are used to travel more quickly, Mr. Kim said, sweating a little cold due to his bad experiences on planes. Oh. Should I bring you something to drink during the flight? A flight attendant looked at the pale Mr. Kim, and offered to help in any way she could. He wasn't the first passenger afraid of flying on this flight, so she knew what to do. I'll be fine if I close my eyes, Devin held a small book in her hands and asked, Do you have any idea about the rules in karate tournaments? Upon hearing that question, Dash shook his head and said, All I know is that I have to hit my opponents twice to get a point and win the competition. In addition to being well-groomed so that your hair doesn't affect your vision, you must be well-uniformed, present yourself cleanly, and go correctly according to the tournament requirements. Dash fell silent and, after remembering that he had sent the uniform to Dree for him to check everything with Mr. Han, he relaxed a bit. At least now, he wouldn't have to worry about those trivialities. Do you think I'll win? Devin remained silent for a few seconds and said, It will be a bit challenging, but you will win. I have complete confidence that you will. Those words, that look, were all Dash needed to be completely sure that he would win that tournament. There is no better medicine than the confidence someone else puts in you, and Devin, who is his closest friend, is a huge support. I'll close my eyes for a moment, wake me up if I don't fall asleep. Devin didn't bother with this joke from Dash, she had become immune to all the jokes he had made throughout their close relationship. She also wanted to be silent, to start the journey in silence, due to the initial nerves of flying on a plane. During this trip, Dash felt happy. All the things he had ever wanted to do were coming true as if by magic, and he hoped this feeling would never end. Now that he was about to meet Mr. Han, he hoped to have some reason for him to evaluate his kung fu, and for both teachers to talk. Mr. Kim was good, he handled his fighting style in various ways, so both could understand each other well. Upon arriving at the airport, a group of people was waiting for them, and they were responsible for taking them to the hotel where they would stay. During the trip, Dash had spent his time sleeping and watching movies with Devon. There was nothing more interesting than that, which was quite normal as they were on a flight. Upon reaching this place, the air felt distinctly different, and just listening to people speak, you could tell where you were. Beijing, which has been the capital for many years, is a place loaded with symbolic temples that depict the cultures of all of China. Dash was quite ignorant in terms of knowledge, so he couldn't say much about this place. While the car was moving along the road, Dash was drinking water like a fish and said, This is my first time out of the country. I never thought the first country to visit would be China, but I'm not complaining. Devon, who had Asian features coming from South Korea, would only resemble these people a little without being seen on numerous occasions, unlike Dash, who stood out for his good looks according to his own judgments. The heat is a bit unbearable, but the place is still nice. Dash couldn't help but mention this when he saw the sights around him. Would they let us bring things home? Devon was very interested in buying some things to take back home. Don't spend your money on anything other than food, the main thing we should do is try new foods. The smile on Dash's face couldn't be hidden when he mentioned this, because he wanted to try the food sold in this country. Of course, the language barrier might complicate things a bit, but nothing that couldn't be solved with Mr. Kim's presence. Even though I speak like an idiot, I'm Korean, don't get me confused, Mr. Kim seemed like a grumpy grandfather who loved being talked to, but got angry over the smallest things. Dash and Devon ignored Mr. Kim in a joking manner, while looking in awe at the temples that were extremely impressive in their eyes, having not experienced this place firsthand. For Dash, this place was completely new, and as for Devon, she was happy to travel abroad in the company of her parents, who had received this trip courtesy of the Hale family. Well, we've arrived. Mr. Kim said as he got out of the van that had picked them up from the airport. Remember the number of your rooms, the place, and the floor we're on. Once we drop off the luggage, we leave something and rest for the rest of the day, Mrs. Zhou reminded them, watching her daughter and Dash quickly run off upon seeing a stone statue. Take a picture of me for the internet. This is our first trip Dash stood in front of a statue of a historical figure, and posed a few times before taking a photo of Devon. 
By the time the photo sessions were over, Dash and Devin entered their room. For Devin's family, they had a reservation with many extra rooms, while Mr. Kim and Dash stayed in another room. Mr. Kim and the Lees didn't know each other very well, so separate rooms were chosen for everyone to be comfortable. Inside the room, Dash lay on his bed after placing his light luggage aside. In this place, you could feel the change in culture due to the room's ambience. But Dash wasn't picky after having lived most of his life in a hospital, as long as the bathroom is good, nothing else really matters. We'll rest for today, and tomorrow we'll visit Mr. Han to finalize the registrations for the tournament. Remember to sleep early, tomorrow we'll travel to learn more about this country and its culture. After a long journey, all anyone wants to do is rest, but Dash had other plans. What he did was review his combat memory skills. He was very nervous and not very tired from the trip, so he needed to keep his mind focused. His movements were fluid, the wind seeped through his clothes, and after half an hour, he took a shower before lying down for a few hours. At least I should stay active on my social media, maybe I'll end up becoming very famous, Dash smiled as he posted some old photos. By recommendation when traveling, it's best not to post current photos to avoid theft or scams. The safest way to do it is to post them once the trip is over, something Dash would do while choosing the best photos for his album. While browsing the internet, he didn't forget to leave a message for his parents, who had already spoken with Mr. Kim while he was showering. The life of an athlete Dash was ashamed of his own words as he had never thought about this when he started exercising. After finishing everything he was doing, he eventually fell asleep for a few hours, and was later awakened by Devin, who had slowly become his assistant. She hadn't let him try anything weird, and she had also told him before that unless he wanted to get a stomachache, he shouldn't try to eat things he hadn't tried before. Dash didn't want to miss the tournament due to a stomachache or, worse yet, explosive diarrhea, as he had seen in movies. The perception of reality was slowly stabilizing in Dash's mind, who was just beginning to experience the world. Within his bubble, many things didn't turn out to be the way he thought, and other things had a more different meaning for certain people. It's true that he had learned many things through his experience in the hospital, but beyond those walls, it's not as if he had known the world. It's better not to experiment with food, Dash didn't want to criticize the food, and he wasn't picky, but there were certain dishes that he couldn't even look at due to their appearance and smell. Of course, there were desserts that Dash obviously didn't omit from trying. At the end of the day, he ate so many desserts that he lost count. The next day, as planned, Dash separated from Devon and her family, who were set to visit some tourist spots. His first stop was to visit Mr. Han, Drew's master. After coordinating the tournament meetings, he planned to spend the following days exploring the city. Leaving the hotel, Dash embarked on his journey with Mr. Kim, the one who could navigate the language. After a somewhat long trip, they reached a rustic area near Dree's neighborhood, where they had agreed to meet. The night before, Dash had spoken with Dree, who was thrilled to meet a friend he had spent a lot of time playing with online. Dree couldn't wait to meet Dash in person, perhaps because he knew about Dash's kung fu training, and saw him as a comrade, willing to join him in battles with Cheng and his kung fu school. It should be around here Dash, observing the buildings and people in the streets, couldn't say much about it. He was unfamiliar with China, and his memories of the historical events that took place here, held no power in this place or any other. This wasn't a story where prior knowledge would give him an advantage, therefore, he couldn't be of much help in finding directions. It must be close, this is the address, so we just need to find the apartment complex. Dash walked alongside Mr. Kim on a different side when, in the distance, he spotted a 12-year-old boy with braided hair and an elderly man wearing a cap. Wait, I found them. By the time Dash said this, Dree, who had seen him, shouted, Oh my god, Mr. Han, that's Dash. Mr. Han was much calmer than the energetic Dree, so he walked calmly towards their meeting point. As a man who had lived a life full of sacrifices and training, he had taken a new path by teaching Dree true kung fu. Upon meeting the friend Dree had mentioned, he felt content. Dash had diverted his gaze to see Mr. Han, a man he knew well as he stood in front of a well-known legend from where he came. Ha! Dash sighed as he hugged Dree, who had come to meet him, and asked, How have you been in this wonderful country full of martial artists? Dree, looking at Dash, who was a bit different from what he remembered, still said, I'm glad you finally made it. I thought you wouldn't show up for the tournament, and I'd have to win it on my own, are you that good at kung fu? Dree's face filled with a sense of confidence as he asked in a low voice, is it true that you won a karate tournament? Of course, I ended up in first place. Dash, who looked at Mr. Han approaching, extended his hand and said, Mr. Han, my name is Dash Hale, and I'm a known friend of Dree Parker. I brought you a gift, this is a martial arts school uniform that I'm interested in expanding worldwide. The idea of expanding a martial arts school was both true and untrue. 
Dash wasn't interested in opening numerous schools. Instead, he aimed to expand the reputation of Sakura Bushido, making everyone aware of how prestigious its members were in the martial arts world. Mr. Han, who received the gift, looked at Dash and said with a somewhat reserved smile, You didn't have to bother. Dri told me about what you want to do, and we can discuss it. In truth, for Mr. Han, opening a kung fu school was a bit exaggerated. It's not that he didn't want to, but he preferred not to be too involved in such commotions. He knew perfectly well that if he got too involved in kung fu, there was no way back to his boring life. But Dash, an expert in dealing with people, said, Have you had lunch? A full stomach is an indicator of happiness, so we could catch up over a meal. Dri, who was glancing at Mr. Han, smiled, knowing that the possibility of him opening a Sakura Bushido branch in Beijing was much more likely. Unable to refuse Dash's hospitality and because they were not well acquainted, Mr. Han nodded, leading them to one of his favorite restaurants. Are those guys you made the deal with strong? Dash, wanting to break the barrier of awkwardness with Dri, initiated a conversation. Fighting someone who knows martial arts while being clueless about it is incomparable. They hit me hard, and I might not be here with unbroken bones if it weren't for Mr. Han. Upon Dri's words, Dash nodded, and for the rest of the day, they only talked about many things related to Kung Fu. Throughout the day, they discussed the tournament, the rules, and, more importantly, what was beyond just winning. Mr. Han, who had no affiliation, believed there was no problem in being a master of a foreign martial arts school, and decided to register Sakura Bushido as a martial arts school participating in the tournament. Dash's brought uniforms were also well received by Dri, and both, after a long conversation, wondered if they would win that tournament. This is a nice uniform. Mr. Han had tried on the uniform, and seeing how incredible it was in terms of details, he knew it was made of very high quality material. This Sakura tree is amazing, Mr. Han. Dri had tried on his participating uniform, and it too, was full of surprises in terms of comfort. Being a black uniform, the details in its embroidery were exquisite, and the seals along with the Sakura Bushido logo, stood out in terms of beauty and quality. After parting ways with Dash and Mr. Kim, Dri had been insisting on Mr. Han, accepting the proposal to open a kung fu school in this country, so they could be in the same division as Dash, even if they weren't in the same country. Mr. Han didn't refuse, but he didn't approve either, leaving Dri in a somewhat awkward silence. So, after saying goodbye, he returned home to show the uniform to his mother, and tell her that they would visit the place where the tournament would be held tomorrow. It's a fitting idea to establish influence in this country if you're looking to participate in national tournaments of the future. Mr. Kim was more familiar with this world and knew the influence that the Chinese had in terms of tournaments. For foreigners, privileges were not abundant, and if you weren't recognized, you might not be admitted to tournaments. But if someone like Mr. Han is involved with the Sakura Bushido Kung Fu School, things could improve significantly. Not only would their martial arts school be considered for prestigious competitions, but they would also be immediately recognized every time they entered a venue. Dash simply wanted his home to shine, to keep his loved ones close, and to teach them the true meaning of sacrifice. The next day, in the area where the tournament would take place, Dash, along with Mr. Kim and with the help of Mr. Han, completed the registrations. After finishing the registration preparations, Dash could see the name Sakura Bushido in the competition, and a smile of satisfaction had appeared on his face since it happened. For many, this might not mean much as he would leave the country a few days after the tournament ended. However, for Dash, this was a total pride as it would make many see his journey, and be inspired to imitate his strong desire to be powerful. This is an amazing place. How many people do you think are here? Devon, who had accompanied him to this place along with her family, saw the surroundings and couldn't help but exclaim, while imagining the competition in a few days. About 500, many of the seats would be taken, so you're lucky that as a competitor, you got a good place to witness the fights. When Dash said this, he looked at the arena and nodded, everything was exactly as he remembered, so there wasn't much to pay attention to beyond knowing a few things before the tournament started. The two continued to explore the place and agreed that there was a significant difference between karate competitions and kung fu competitions, showcasing the diversity of both tournaments. So far, what do you like the most about this place? Dash asked her while looking into the distance as Dri had his emotional conversation with Mr. Han. My experience is normal, I suppose your friend must go through tough times when the elders pointed him, as if he were never before seen dull. Devon looked at Dri in the distance and couldn't help mentioning this, while recalling all the things she had seen on her trip. Chinese people don't usually see individuals with dark skin. It would be like sending a Chinese person to another country where Asian features are rare, like Africa. 
Beyond racism, it was normal for such situations to arise. Curiosity is something that makes people uneasy, and it can't be avoided. During his time in the hospital, Dash had seen numerous special cases where patients from other countries were sent to the hospital where he was treated due to its high success rates in treating rare diseases. So, he understood something about what he was talking about when it came to curiosity. Let's go for some ice cream, the heat is killing me in this place. Devon dragged Dash to an ice cream shop in search of her chocolate ice cream. Inside a building was a spacious area where many people were sitting, enjoying desserts and ice creams that looked very appealing. Right ahead was the area where one could buy them, and at that moment, Dash, who had accompanied Devon, drew much attention because of his foreign features. Although he was young, he had a good appearance, which made him look good in the eyes, according to his own judgments. As this place was full of locals, Dash, who felt like a fly in a beehive, walked stiffly to the line just behind Devon, who was unfazed by those glances. They should at least try to disguise their looks. What a mess Devon, who had already decided to buy an ice cream, tried to push other thoughts out of her mind. I've heard from Mr. Han that there are female kung fu tournaments, but only starting from the age of 15. There were even couple tournaments where this year's champions are from South Korea. The best part is that the prizes are high. While Devon was choosing the ice creams to buy, she nodded upon hearing Dash's words and then said, Are you now considering entering me into a tournament here? Isn't that fantastic? Both of us would be unstoppable in competitions. Just a few more years, and we could become the golden couple of martial arts. While Dash said this, he watched as Devon put out the fire and indulged in a mint-flavored ice cream, which was one of her favorites. You know I love to compete, but now I just want to eat my chocolate ice cream. Devon, with all the discomfort around her, didn't want to talk about tournaments and martial arts related things, as her fists were itching. Look at that kid, a complete little devil Dash looked at a child who was dropping his ice cream while wiping his nose. Let's head back, I want to tell you about many of the things I've seen so far Devon, not wanting to stay a minute longer in this place, return with Dash to the place where everyone had agreed to meet. Unknown places are terrifying, especially the city. Many try to scam you, and many more try to sell you things you don't even know the purpose of. At some point in the walk, Dash, who thought they charged for a photo to take one with a parrot, was about to buy the parrot directly without realizing it. After wandering through different places and taking a dozen more photos, Dash and Devon returned with the others to the hotel to rest. In the following days, Dash's lifestyle was confined to maintaining a normal training routine, to keep his mind focused on the upcoming tournament. During the day, he trained with Devon in simulated combat exercises, and when he felt unable to continue, he swam in the hotel pool. After finishing swimming half an hour later, he relaxed in a bathtub for some time to recover his energy. Subsequently, at night, he practiced memory exercises of strikes, kicks, and defense, which were his strengths in combat. Among the younger participants in the tournament, there probably wasn't anyone who could maintain this training pace. After all, Dash should realize that he had a unique body that allowed him to follow these strict routine forms without ending up exhausted. At night, what Dash did was remember his training style, and adapted to imaginary fights while trying again and again to improve his sense of battle. This was his way of resting his mind, and his combat experience and reaction speed, it improved immensely, until Dash believed he could react to a confrontation where he had to think fast. But he probably also thought that it would be ironic to believe that he was extremely talented when he was doing something that many others could also do. Moreover, maybe he'll taste the bitterness of defeat someday, and that's why he trains hard without thinking he's good at what he does, as that would make him inferior to many who train daily. So, right now, the dash he had become was the closest to perfection, having the right mindset to be a winner from his humble experience. In the blink of an eye, the remaining days until the tournament had come to an end. During this week, Dash had also lightly trained with Dree to get the hang of his kung fu, and for him to be familiar with the fights. However, during this period, Dash did not push himself to the maximum as he wanted to be in perfect condition. The situation continued this way until the day of the tournament. While meeting with Mr. Kim, Dash bid farewell to Devon, who promised to support him wholeheartedly, and wished him a crushing victory against his rivals. Those words left Dash completely motivated to crush anyone in front of him in the tournament. There was no doubt he wanted to win, he had the skill, and he felt that as long as nothing significant came up, he could demolish his opponents. Heading to the tournament site, Dash met Dri, who was wearing the same uniform as him, and also Mr. Han, who had finally put on his teacher's uniform. Mr. Kim and Mr. Han talked for a while as they were admitted to the complexes after being listed. First, we'll fight the qualifiers. Once we win all the scheduled fights, we'll move on to the big stage, said Dash as he walked ahead of Dri, who was very scared of the fights. 
Despite all this, Dash was aware that even in that state, he won the tournament in a very beastly way that he still vividly remembers in his memories. There are so many people, this is incredible. Dree felt much more confident knowing he had Dash supporting him. He couldn't help but feel more secure knowing he wasn't alone. The most important thing is that you shouldn't pay attention to anything other than the opponent in front of you. I'm aware that you have a rival to face, but you must first defeat many more before you meet him in the tournament. As Dash had more experience in the tournament than Dree, he shared many of his mistakes and things he needed to learn to never lose track of the fight no matter what. In this tournament, he didn't care about the future, all he wanted was to win this tournament and prove to himself once again, that he could defeat rivals fairly. By the time Dash entered the venue, his eyes immediately discreetly sought Devon, and seeing her in the distance, he smiled slightly as he nodded with his gaze. He didn't know until when his friendship with Devon would remain like this, but he would really do everything to make sure it never ended. Now, with the tournament to win, Dash looked at all the participants, and his eyes fixed on Cheng, who was not a bad guy, but was taught by a bad teacher. Before the day ended, at least Dash wanted to see the same result that happened in the original story, with him reconciled with Dree. That would be a truly good ending, and if he was lucky, he could even invite him to the Sakura Bushido school, which would be supervised by Mr. Han. When his eyes met Cheng's, he smiled slightly and bowed in greeting, to which Cheng responded in the same way before looking away. You have enemies, I can tell that teacher is of very bad taste, and I'm afraid he'll act the same way as the sensei I talked about. Be careful in your fights. Dash looked at Dree, who had nodded with a serious look, and said, It would be incredible if either of us won the tournament, wouldn't it? I'll take care of eliminating the competition, we'll be on opposite sides, so probably one of us will have to fight Cheng first. Who do you think will have the luck to face him? Dree looked at Dash and replied, I hope it could be me, I have some pending issues, but it would be lucky if I made it to the final with so little time to train. You have talent, which is important. Many don't have the qualities you enjoy, so you can go further than you imagine. By the time Dash said this, the competition was about to begin, the qualifying matches to choose the best fighters, so that everyone could see their skills similarly to karate. Devon, seated near the lower areas, observed all the competitors and murmured, There are many more participants than in the karate tournament, this will take some time before moving on to the main matchups. Mr. Zak, standing beside his daughter, held a flag with the Sakura Bushido logo, and shouted in support of Dash, who was only a few meters away from them. Your father seems more excited than his daughter. The love for these sports has definitely awakened from within him, Mrs. Zhou remarked, glancing at her husband and smiling slightly as she turned her attention to the front, where the matches were about to unfold. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this event. We will have a sensational show. What do you think? Is everyone eager for it to begin? The presenter stood in front of the crowd and shouted with a booming voice, let the Kung Fu tournament begin. Mr. Kim surveyed the different mats in the venue, and, after communicating with the staff, directed Dash to a nearby corner, saying, your match will take place here. Remember to hit the areas I mentioned to score points. Stop when the flags are raised, and don't lose focus. I got it. Dash nodded with conviction and advanced towards the designated mat. Across from him stood an 11-year-old boy who seemed a bit fearful of facing someone older, but this didn't stop him from taking his fighting stance. As Dash looked at his opponent, a serious expression settled on his young face, and he murmured, I'll finish you before you feel any pain. Introduce yourselves. Ready. Fight. As the preliminary match for Dash, marking the beginning of his tournament, commenced, he took a deep breath and started moving towards his opponent, who was a few meters away. This time, utilizing his kung fu in every move, he launched an impactful kick to the face of his unsuspecting opponent. HSSS. Many weren't watching Dash's fight as around 10 matches were happening simultaneously. Still, those who witnessed his kick were left astounded by the sudden and powerful attack that quickly brought down his opponent. Point. Observing his rival writhing on the ground with intense pain etched on his face, Dash gazed at him for a brief moment before returning to his starting position, waiting for his opponent to get up. The boy, who had shed a few tears, got back on his feet, glared at Dash angrily, and assumed a fighting stance. Now angered, he seemed intent on starting the fight as soon as the referee signaled. Faced with this, Dash raised his arms patiently. This time, he wasn't as aggressive in the second round, waiting to see what his opponent intended to do before making his move. Ready. Fight. The moment the referee raised his hand, Dash's opponent rushed towards him with clenched fists. In response, Dash leaned back, evading the kick, and through a swift takedown, gained an immediate advantage, finishing the match with an elbow to the stomach, as his opponent got back up. Point. 
Bash nodded slightly to his fallen opponent and walked back to Mr. Kim, who looked at him with seriousness. Well done, Dash. That was incredible. Devin exclaimed, thrilled that Dash should easily won his first match. One by one, astonished looks fell upon Dash, his kicks had been both brutal and flawless. Just by looking at his opponent's red and cheek and holding stomach, it was clear that the blows received were far from weak. The previously scattered attention focused on Dash and Sheng, who was also a remarkable fighter known for his fierce battles. Strong and decisive. Zack shouted, proudly waving the flag from side to side. Some Kung Fu masters evaluated students from other schools who might pose a threat to their chances of winning this tournament, and all eyes were on Dash, the foreign student. Dri, who had witnessed Dash's brutal fight, was amazed that he could resolve the match so quickly, demonstrating that his combat experience was sufficient to advance without difficulty. Do you have your match now? Dash, still overwhelmed by the emotions of the fight, looked at Dree seriously and asked discreetly. Dree nodded nervously, saying, right after this one ends, I wish you luck, then. Never forget to hold your ground. Dash's response was simple, as his teachings might not mean much to a guy who had also won this tournament in the history he knew. While walking around, observing the ongoing matches, Dash nodded as he realized there was a higher level of skill than he had expected. Not everyone might be adept at combat since this was their first tournament, but there were fighters with significant experience who knew how to concentrate. Mr. Kim glanced at Dash for a brief moment and thought, you may believe your chances of winning aren't high, but only someone who has trained for years will know how talented you are Dash, you're the only one unaware of how good you are at Kung Fu. As Dash analyzed some competitors he might face, the time for his next match arrived. As time passed, the matches became increasingly brutal due to the presence of more skilled fighters, making it challenging for even the most experienced contestants. Dash had been dominating one-on-one -on -one battles, just like Dre, who, after overcoming initial difficulties, started winning with much more ease. But this time, Dash would face a boy named Liang before advancing to the main matches, and upon seeing Liang's uniform, Dash recognized which school he belonged to. A student of Master Li Dash recalled this boy, knowing that he was the one who had intentionally injured Dri in the match before facing Cheng. Although he had hurt Dri on orders, there was no doubt that letting his guard down against Liang posed a danger. It will be a pleasure to face you smiling secretly as he looked at the ferocious looking young man, Dash felt excited. Greetings. Ready. Fight. After hearing the start of the match, Dash kept his eyes on Liang, who raised his guard toward him. He must be very fast, so I need to maintain my distance. Liang was known for having no mercy, according to Kung Fu understanding, which was similar to the Cobra Kai that Daniel LaRusso had defeated with his two victories over that dojo. Now. In an instant, Liang wouldn't allow Dash to assess him for too long, being the first to initiate the fight. Therefore, just as Dash evaluated his opponent, Liang slid toward him. Apparently in front of him, Liang attacked with a punch aimed at Dash's ribs, while simultaneously sliding his right leg to trip him. Up and faint watching Liang's rapid attack, Dash concentrated, raising his guard to defend against the strikes, and pushing Liang back, who had started very aggressively. Shortly after, a series of punches and defenses echoed throughout the mat. Pump. 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 Sakura Bushido against the Fighting Dragon Studio. As the only match that hadn't concluded, many people in the crowd were astonished as they watched Dash face off at the same level as Liang. Not that it was a great fight, but many didn't expect a foreigner to go head-to-head -head with a student from the Fighting Dragon Studio, who were, theoretically, the organizers of this tournament. Sakura Bushido. Master Lee glanced at Dash's Kung Fu School logo, and, after seeing Master Han's logo, concluded that both came from the same school. Do you know him? Master Lee looked at Cheng, who watched the fight with a serious expression, and shook his head. He has never been with that kid from the beginning, Cheng hadn't seen Dash anywhere other than in this tournament. The dojo is from abroad, although it's useless for them to wear their emblem, they will lose just the same pum. Under the gaze of the crowd, Dash and Liang exchanged their fastest blows, causing everyone to focus on each of their combinations. But at that moment, when Dash had stabilized his posture, a straight kick was launched from the front by his opponent. However, the result that the crowd expected did not happen, because when Liang launched the kick, it was met with a fierce counter-attack that left him on the ground. Pum. With a punch planted in Liang's shoulder, Dash, who had started to sweat, looked at this result with a smile. It's not that he couldn't have finished the fight earlier, but what he was doing was assessing Liang's kung fu, since there were rivals like Cheng, who should have the same style, being all apprentices of Master Li. Point. All Yang held his shoulder and looked at Dash with absolute fury, feeling the shame of losing a point. That was truly a great counterattack. 
while Devon in the crowd watched Dash, who had delivered a kick counter to Liang, a look of happiness blossomed on her face, as she and her father couldn't stop shouting messages of support. Within the Kung Fu school, Liang is known to be one of the top three fighters, but seeing how he had been controlled all this time, many looked at Dash in amazement. Let's finish this. Dash extended his fists while opening and closing his fingers in Liang's direction. Although he had no issues with these Kung Fu students, they had spent some time bothering Dri just for a silly whim, so now Dash would repay them a bit for everything they did to his friend. Facing Liang, Dash's eyes were firmly fixed on his movements, and as the fight began again, he ran towards him without stopping. Since he couldn't reveal his entire fighting style, what Dash was about to do was end the fight as quickly as he could, now that he had learned what he wanted. The moment he ran towards Liang, he desperately tried to maintain control of the fight, but in a brief instant, everything had spiraled out of control when Dash's blows became faster. Pump, pump, pump. In an instant, Dash had broken through his opponent's defenses and struck his right hand into Liang's stomach. Ah. Liang, who wanted to counterattack when feeling the pain of the blow, recoiled, and before he could recover, a double kick hit his leg and shoulder. Pump, pump, point. The referee shouted, stopping the fight. When Dash, breathing quickly, saw Liang on the ground, he smiled a bit and bowed respectfully. Winner. By the time Dash finished the match with his overwhelming attack, he had advanced directly to the round of 16, and his opponent would be a boy with the surname Dong, who excelled in close quarters combat. At this moment, many people could see the leaderboard, and upon seeing the upcoming round of 16, everyone filled with excitement. Because the matches were numerous and many of them ended quickly, the decision was made to conduct two matches at a time from the round of 16 onwards, reserving the quarterfinals for the most highlighted fights of the tournament. Well done, Dash, take a rest for now. Mr. Kim handed Dash a water bottle as he stepped off the combat mat. At this moment, after Dash's victory, two other matchups were unfolding, and this wouldn't stop until the quarterfinals. Glancing at the large screen displaying the list of qualifiers, Dash realized something curious. Dri would fight Cheng sooner than he had anticipated. Maybe my performance changed things, Dash murmured while drinking water. He couldn't think of anything else, he was in the real world, and the mere coincidence of something he knew could change because he was here, he knew things could happen this way, and he didn't really care. Sitting among the audience, Devin clenched her fists nervously as she saw Dash successfully advance to the round of 16. In her own judgment, this wasn't his peak combat performance, so she believed he was still holding back for the quarterfinals, which was fine but very risky. In previous matchups, Dash usually didn't take long to eliminate his opponents with brutal strikes. Even on rare occasions, he would give them hope that they could score a point before swiftly eliminating them with a counter-attack. Are you learning about his kung fu? Devin came to this conclusion after seeing that the guy he defeated belonged to a kung fu school with many students still in the tournament. It was a good idea to control the fights by knowing about the enemy's kung fu, but this also opened doors for opponents to learn about Dash's unique kung fu. On Devon's left side was her mother, who was watching the matchups, and after a while, she asked, Hey, daughter, do you think Dash has a chance to make it to the final? Devon didn't pay much attention to many things around her, but when she heard that question, she nodded and said, He will easily win the matches until the quarterfinals. From there, he will have to fight with that guy named Wu Ping, who is one of the top contenders along with Cheng, so he will face difficulties from there. Mr. Zak, who was on her right side, nodded and said, Although Dash has good battle experience, these guys are also very aware of their surroundings, and the speed at which they move is incomparable to karate. Kung Fu makes use of techniques, so their movements are more fluid, allowing each fighter to move according to their fighting style. Dash plays more defensively to counter-attack, but lately, we've been practicing close-range attacks. So, you also fight that way. My heart would ache if you were hit in a similar tournament. I may get hit, but I would win. Believe it or not, I'm better at kicks than Dash, Devin murmured a bit annoyed by her mother's lack of confidence in her. Look, it seems that guy named Dree has also won the match. Devin looked at Dree Parker, who had won by a narrow margin, and nodded. She didn't have the pleasure of getting to know him much, but she knew a few things about him from Dash, who told her about his problem, and why he initially fights in a kung fu tournament. Listen, Dong has very strong kicks because his kung fu requires the fighter to harden their bones with micro fractures, so you shouldn't clash kicks with someone like him. Focus on defense and close the fight with a feint. Mr. Kim had seen Dong's kicks, and had received many warnings about the improper use of his strength, which gave him enough hints to know that he used the power of his bones to seriously injure his opponents. Bone hardening is something new, why hasn't he taught me something so cool? Dash's eyes sparkled with excitement upon learning that there was a way to harden his bones. 
Act as focus. Once you advance to the quarterfinals, that's when the main matches will begin, and that's all that matters in this competition. Mr. Kim pointed Dash in the direction he needed to go for his next matchup. By the time Dash entered the mat, the audience that had paid attention to him began to cheer, hoping to witness his match. I'm famous wherever I go. Dash smiled cunningly and muttered, I'll finish this match quickly so I can enjoy the quarterfinals looking at his opponent's height, the smile on Dash's face slowly faded, and he wondered, is that kid old enough to compete? The boy who had seen Dash smiled coldly, looked him up and down, and walked to his position to begin the fight. Ready. The round of 16 had officially begun. Fight. Under the watchful eyes of the audience, Dash clasped his hands and bowed in a gesture of respect toward his opponent. Similarly, Dong inclined towards him while sporting a somewhat strange smile. Fight. Upon hearing the start of the much-anticipated match, the audience erupted in cheers filled with excitement. On the mats, two matchups were about to unfold, and two quarterfinalists would be named from this confrontation. I've been practicing a lot for this, your size won't make a difference now and never will with the signal to begin, Dash's body moved to the side, lightly hopping on the ground. Suddenly, as Dong approached, Dash swung his right foot like a whip towards Dong's side. Crack. Dash's powerful kick was stopped by Dong's right foot, causing both to collide with force. Under this painful kick, Dash's expression became even more hardened as he took a few steps back, feeling the burning pain in his right foot. That kick was painful, he didn't expect Dong to receive it in that manner, and that's why it resulted in damage. I won't be able to engage in a kicking match since I'll lose. My only way is to be aggressive in close quarters combat. By the time Dash reached this conclusion, even though he had been warned before, Dong had already advanced and began launching powerful kicks aimed at Dash's head, who started to dodge them. The initial kicks, as Dash retreated, were easy to dodge as they didn't hit his body. However, as the distance of the combat zone was running out, the first kick hit his left shoulder. Although his guard was up, the impact was painful. Now or never still sore from the powerful blows he received a moment ago, the most painful he had felt since he started training, Dash had to be alert if he didn't want to get even more injured. The moment Dong stepped back, Dash took the lead, stretching his arm and hitting with all his might. HSSS. Having struck Dash's shoulder heavily, he recoiled because it was a strong enough hit for the referee to score a point. However, when he saw that Dong showed no changes, he knew something was wrong. What the hell? Dong smiled slightly and with a spin, kicked Dash's chest, sending him straight to the ground. While still wondering why his blow hadn't caused any damage, the referee took a step forward and awarded a point to Dong, who wanted to keep on hitting. Dash, get up. Mr. Kim shouted, having clearly seen how Dash's blow had connected, but had no results, unlike other times, so he warned, don't hold back, hit him with everything you have. Mr. Han, who had been observing the fight, frowned and approached the referee to complain, it was a point for Dash Hill, Dong was clearly hit. Impact, but it wasn't a clear point, there's nothing to review. Check his clothing under his uniform, he must have some bandages to not feel the pain. Dash, lying on the mat, furrowed his brows, filled with fury, and with a leap, he stood up again. Gently rubbing his chest, he looked at Dong, who was ready to fight again, and smiled slightly. I'm going to break your teeth, you bastard. Dash knew that the big guy had something under his uniform, whatever it was that made the blows hurt less, so he had to land his best hits on the nerves. Seeing Dash stand up, the referee pointed at Dong and asked, ready, fight. By the time Dash heard that announcement again, he quickly ran towards Dong, who had quickly launched a kick towards his shoulder. Locking the kick forcefully, he exerted all his strength in his right arm, and struck Dong's ribs. A-H-H. Dong's scream was deafening as he fell to the ground. What a damn pain Dash murmured as he shook his right shoulder that had been hit twice in the same spot despite blocking. After seeing that he couldn't harm Dong, what Dash did was hit his shoulder with force, and hoped that the point where his attack was directed, was well protected, since it would be a strong impact. Point. Come on, stop crying. Dash shouted as he walked back and forth, visibly angered by losing a point in this manner. In normal situations, it's a luxury to lose to people better than oneself, but in this situation, things shouldn't be like that as it could cost him the victory. Now that he had lost a point, it meant that if he made the same mistake again, he would be out of the quarterfinals, and he couldn't allow that. Not when people who cared about him were watching and not being a previous winner in a karate tournament. Dong didn't take much longer to get up, but obviously, that blow he had received from Dash, had caused him a lot of damage. If he didn't have bandages under his uniform, it was certain that he wouldn't be able to continue with the fight. Come on, I'm going to crush you mercilessly. Dash looked at Dong, who had been watching him with a smile, and frowned with anger. 
There was nothing else in life that made him angrier than seeing others cheat to unfairly win against a person who had been training as hard as he had to win this tournament. Right now, numerous eyes were watching his next fight, since that would determine who would be the winner, and they would have the first quarterfinal ready. Since there was no need to hold back, Dash knew that to win, he mustn't have mercy on the enemy, and crush him so much that he couldn't get up again. Originally, he wasn't as cruel as Devin was, he could be aggressive, but that was only in fights since, in real life, he was a very calm guy who argued with his friend about movies and TV series. But when things go wrong, what he must do is not have mercy and be cruel to those who want to snatch away the glory he has been seeking since he started in this world. After watching Dash's movements, Dong's gaze showed a little fear, and he raised his guard, while the referee prepared to start the fight again. Ready. Fight. As soon as the referee initiated the fight, Dash quickly advanced, sliding on the floor to avoid Dong's first kick. By the time Dong turned around, Dash had already knocked him down with a low kick that made him lose his balance. But Dash didn't stop, to win, he needed to make a point clear, and he jumped, wanting to drop on Dong, who had fallen to the ground. Seeing the impending blow, Dong rolled on the ground quickly and left the combat platform. First warning, if you leave the mad in combat form once more, one point will be deducted, and you'll be out. The referee shouted to Dong, who had stood up. Looking at Dash, who was ready, Dong extended his hands and shouted, fight. Despite having the advantage, Dash didn't stop and ran towards Dong, who didn't have time to kick. Inevitably, he initiated close quarters combat, which sentenced his fate. Dash, an expert in close combat, deflected Dong's attacks and, after hitting his opponent's nerves three times, finished the fight with a strong blow to Dong's stomach, leaving him breathless. Pump. 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 Twisting but still with his guard up, Dash looked at his opponent who had fallen to the ground, and breathed a few times before lowering his guard. Point. Winner. Under the platform, Mr. Kim frowned as he saw Dash's rigid right shoulder and didn't celebrate this victory. Shortly after, he shifted his gaze to the right foot, and seeing that it was also stiff, it was obvious that it had been injured. I'll need ice, Mr. Kim murmured after seeing this and disappeared into the crowd. After hearing that he had won, Dash bowed and stepped off the platform amid the applause of the audience. Although everyone was a bit surprised, there was no doubt that the best had won, and with the quarterfinalists secured, everyone celebrated. Dash didn't pay attention to anyone else when he descended, his mind was still chaotic after losing a point in that way, and he needed to calm down at least. By the time he descended, Mr. Kim approached with a bag of ice and said, put it on your shoulder. Dash lowered his uniform and placed the ice bag on his shoulder. When Mr. Kim saw the injuries in that area, he knew he had two slight contusions, so it wasn't as serious as he thought. While watching the next two fights, Dash sighed deeply after catching his breath. Damn fool, you'll kill me with a scare. Devin muttered, having seen how Dash almost lost the fight against that opponent. When Dash won the match, he had directed his gaze towards Devin and smiled visibly while holding the ice on his shoulder. He should be disqualified, damn cheater. Devin's father, who had little idea of what he had just seen, argued with a Chinese man next to him, who said that Dash had gotten overconfident, and that's why he had lost a point for the first time in the competition. In contrast to what he had seen, Devin had clearly observed how Dash had hit Dong, and how he hadn't been hurt. It's worth mentioning that Dash's punches weren't weak at all, she knew it very well since she had personally faced simulation fights, and felt her friends contained blows. With this, he's in the quarterfinals. I hope the blows to his right shoulder aren't too severe, and he can continue fighting. Zo knew her daughter's friend, so it was better for him not to be injured and to fight, than to decide to continue even with his injuries. Devin agreed with her mother's words. She had been with Dash since the beginning of his training, and knew perfectly well that he wouldn't give up until he couldn't continue. He wouldn't stop until he can't stand up or loses the fight, Devin smiled slightly due to nervousness. She hadn't lost a single fight at the hands of anyone other than Dash, so she couldn't imagine seeing him lose. But no one is invincible in this world, so at least she had been mentally preparing to face defeat in the best way and hope for the best. As for Dash, who had never before tasted defeat, he believed that this might hit him a bit hard, and if you ask her, she didn't want to see him lose, since it wasn't clear how he would react to it. I'm fine, just that his kicks were hard even after blocking them, Dash reassured Mr. Kim, who was concerned about bruises on his left shoulder. Then, how's your right leg? A little hurt, but it's not something I should pay much attention to Dash didn't want to make a fuss about these injuries that were normal. Having come out victorious is what really matters since if everything had been easy, he wouldn't have felt this victory as a great achievement in this tournament. Watching the next fights, Zhuang and Wu Ping, who were on the same bracket as Dash, didn't encounter any problems to advance to the quarterfinals. 
Dash's next opponent was already decided, and it was Zhuang, who should be concerned if he wanted to face Wu Ping later, who was his next opponent to be before reaching the final, and finding out if it would be Cheng or Dri he would face. In contrast to Cheng and Dri's boring fights, who swept through, Dash and Wu Ping became the big stars for their great and long battles that had been demonstrated in the arena. Cheng's overwhelming victories were nice to watch, but many wished that he would have at least a bit of rivalry as he advanced in the ranking, something that hadn't happened. I'm afraid the quarterfinals won't be so good for Dri, Mr. Kim analyzed Dri's next opponent and frowned slightly, knowing that he possibly wouldn't reach the final. The next opponent belonged to the Fighting Dragon studio, and their students didn't enjoy a good reputation due to how ruthless they were in each of their fights. Well, he'll manage. Dash murmured as he caught his breath and mentally prepared for the next fight. For Dash, this question arose when he lost a point. Is this how it feels to be on the verge of losing? He hadn't experienced many things before dying, he wanted to know what it felt like to be hit, to breathe abundantly, and to laugh until he fell to the ground uncontrollably. He had been experiencing all these sensations since he arrived in this world, and he didn't know how long it would last, but while it happened, he wanted to at least do the best he could to be a better person. He has seen many people die without living life correctly, unlike others who had the opportunity to do so. At night, he cried for not being like everyone else, and felt resentful towards the adults who didn't take advantage of the well-being of their bodies. As society advances, they always worry about being attractive, about their physique, or if they'll have a beautiful partner someday in their lives. But the truth is that the most special gift in the world is to be well, good health is better than anything else in the world. When one learns this, they know perfectly well the value of life, and that's when they truly begin to live. Dash would continue fighting until he believed it was enough, and he hadn't reached that point in his life. In that case, he wouldn't give up even though the pain was intense in his body now, and he would do everything possible to be a winner in life. He wanted to show everyone that he was a winner, he had to prove to the past Dash that he is now a winner. He couldn't just sit around doing nothing, not now and maybe not in the future. After the last match of the octaves, the arena underwent modifications to create a raised platform surrounded by dozens of seats, each one occupied. With a larger fighting area, more spectators started to approach, and Devon's family was among those who moved closer, having reserved their seats in advance. Following the staff, Devon's family quickly found their designated seats a short distance from the platform where the quarterfinal matches would take place. However, only the participating winners were in a designated area far from the regular audience to maintain better control of the situation. After the seating arrangements were sorted out, Dash, who had remained calm, was soon called to the fight, and became the first to step onto the platform. His opponent was Zhuang, who seemed to be quite fast, but for someone like Dash, this posed no significant challenge. With the changed brackets, Dash now had to face tough opponents, while Dri would confront Cheng before the final a situation that suited Dash perfectly, as he aimed to be the tournament winner. Of course, there was a possibility of defeat, but initially, Dash sought victory. Over the years, many skilled competitors had been unexpectedly defeated quite easily, so Dash disliked being arrogant. Protect your affected areas. They don't know you're injured, and it should stay that way. Understand. Mr. Kim immediately advised Dash on his fighting strategy against the slightly shorter Zhuang. I'll play close combat match. There's no chance he can attack my injured areas, so you don't need to worry, Mr. Kim, Dash nodded as he walked towards the elevated platform. Ha. Huh. That Zhuang is very unfortunate. Now that Dash almost lost, he won't let his opponent harm him in the quarterfinals, Devon remarked, looking at the crowd and thinking to herself as she observed Dash's opponent stepping onto the platform. Devon was thrilled to be able to watch the matches up close, now her cheers could be heard, making her even happier. His opponent is Zhuang. When Devon heard people talking about Dash's opponent, she looked back, wanting to know who was speaking English. They should be foreigners, although it's challenging to determine who is Chinese or not. Those people don't know that Dash won a tournament in an incredible way, Zack observed the crowd, and soon began waving his Sakura Bushido flag. Salute. The referee, now standing at the side of the competitors, looked at both of them for a few seconds before asking, Ready? Fight. Now. As the referee's voice faded, Zhuang let out a powerful shout, showcasing his moves. In just one step, he rushed towards Dash, fists clenched tightly, attacking directly at the chest. Taking charge of the defense, Dash didn't retreat since this was exactly what he wanted in this confrontation. Furthermore, he absorbed the blows and began using his fast-paced fighting style to advance forward. To the audience's amazement, Dash took a straight step forward, his right hand extending backward, advancing like a powerful projectile seeking a weak point in Zhuang. Boom. 
while Dash's right fist struck Zhuang's chest. This blow didn't carry impact force, but rather a pushing force, causing Zhuang's body to be pushed off the fighting platform. However, just as Zhuang was desperately trying to retain balance to avoid falling, Dash changed his stance and delivered a powerful kick to his opponent's cheek. Thud. The referee, who had run over to that spot, quickly stopped Ash, sent him to a corner, and rushed to check Zhuang's condition, as he had fallen to the ground. It's nothing, I'm fine in perfect Mandarin, Zhuang brushed off the referee who was checking his cheek, and walked back to the center of the platform. Point. You should know when to give up. Dash looked at Zhuang and raised his standard Kung Fu stance again. You lead those words. Zhuang muttered as the referee initiated the fight once again. Fight. As the match resumed, Dash ran towards Zhuang, who also advanced, launching an attack with an open palm that was easily deflectable. Remember the rules, play with the enemy's mind. Dash recalled Mr. Kim's words, and, seeing that Zhuang had taken his hand, smiled as he noticed that his trap had been taken by his opponent. In an instant, Dash's stance changed abruptly to avoid Zhuang's initial attack aimed at his body. At that moment, he squeezed the fingers of his hand, formed a fist, and with his retracted right hand, quickly attacked to strike Zhuang's face. Thud. When the fist landed on Zhuang's face, he didn't stop, but that was his mistake, as Dash, who was prepared, started a series of rapid combinations that soon impacted all over his opponent's body. Huff spitting out all the air from his stomach through his throat, Zhuang knew he had lost this match before even attempting anything against Dash, Dri's companion. But just as he was about to surrender, two blows simultaneously headed towards his chest, completing his defeat. Point, winner. It was a good fight Dash bowed slightly in acknowledgement of his swift victory, and then smiled faintly. The audience that had witnessed this beautiful match soon erupted in excited cheers, supporting Dash, who had completely crushed Yueng. You must take care of that kid so he won't be a problem for Cheng to face in his best condition against the other, Master Li advised his student, who was about to fight Dri, while looking at Dash's group with a gaze full of coldness. Did you see that, Mr. Han? Dash destroyed that guy. Dri was very excited, jumping from side to side, knowing that his friend had entered the tournament semifinals. Watching Dash descend from the platform, Mr. Han smiled. He had a favorable impression of Dash, considering him a good guy. However, in real competitions, it seemed as if Dash was filled with a deep anger, an inner fury unleashed only when he competed. He uses his kung fu in a curious way Mr. Han might not agree with using martial arts to unleash inner anger, but he wasn't Dash's master to teach him how to act. Moreover, he knew there was something behind Dash's actions in the tournaments. However, before worrying about other people's kung fu, he followed his student, who would face a rival with even more hidden hatred. Mr. Han turned to look at Master Li, knowing that the latter was planning something not good for the upcoming match, which concerned him a bit. Dash, that was brilliant. As Dash walked back to his place, Mr. Zak congratulated him on his performance in the match. You did very well, Mr. Kim said with a smile, handing him a bag of ice to continue applying it to his injured shoulder. More importantly, Dash and Dri's performances had brightened the faces of the audience, learning about this new kung fu school that had been dominating the tournament. Thanks, it wasn't that big of a deal Dash smiled, slightly embarrassed by all the attention he had been receiving, and bowed to the people congratulating him. After the Zhuang duel ended, the competition continued with Liu and other competitors, but what mattered most to Dash was Dri's subsequent confrontation, which would happen before facing Liu. All matches ended quickly. As predicted, Liu and Wu Ping were able to secure their victories thanks to their powerful combat skills. Behind them would be Dri's next match, the last of the quarterfinals, marking the beginning of the most anticipated semifinal. Go, Dri, I know you'll win. Dash said, supporting his friend as he nervously climbed onto the platform. As Dri walked, he soon saw his opponent named Chen, and knew that this would be a tough rival to defeat before even thinking about facing Liu. Salute. Ready. Fight. Dri smiled as a burning fire shone in his eyes. He might not be better than many fighters in this tournament, but his skills allowed him to stay not far behind each of them. He was sure he wouldn't be less in a fight, as he had been demonstrating so far. Dri, focus, and don't get hurt. Standing below the platform, Dash shouted as if fearing that history would repeat itself. As they observed the combat stances of both, many people began cheering because this time there wasn't a clear favor to win. But the fights were mostly very outstanding, demonstrating how hard everyone had trained to reach this point. Come on, kid, be careful, Mr. Han murmured a little worried. While everyone awaited the start of the match, Liu began moving directly forward. In an instant, a devastating force surged from his muscles, attacking horizontally with his right foot. 
For a moment, Dree didn't know how to evade this attack. Retreating wasn't an option, so the smartest move was to change position, knowing that if he received that kick, he would get hurt even if he blocked it. By avoiding that blow, Liu closed the gap and began trying to strike Dree in some way, while learning more about the defense his opponent was using. And just when he thought he had control of the fight, with a strong palm that made Dree step back, he received a strong kick to his left leg. But that wasn't enough for his opponent to score a point. So, taking advantage of the distance and knowing that his opponent had just attacked, Dree took a step forward, and, with the help of a jump, raised his right hand, striking down on Liu's face, who hadn't expected this change in the fight. Thud. Point. Although Dree, who had won, didn't feel entirely well when he landed back on the ground, his left leg, which had been kicked, was indeed hurt. This bothered him a bit as he didn't know how to avoid being hit like that again. As he got back into a fighting position, Dree's nervous expression entered Liu's field of vision, and he smiled a bit. Fight. As the match restarted, Liu launched a new kick to Dree's leg, which was blocked with his forearm. However, with a quick spin, he kicked again in the same area. Contrary to what Dash had expected in this match, what he could see was that Liu focused on hitting a single point to deal a lot of damage to Dree, who kept trying to dodge those kicks. Evading that blow again, Dree let out a grunt as he tried to kick with his left leg, but at that moment, Liu held it and forcefully struck the same area using his right elbow. Ah. Feeling the pain like an electric shock, Dree dropped to one knee. Liu, who had struck, stepped back, refraining from continuing to hit, and looked with a slightly affected expression, at the result of Master Li's request. He didn't plan on making illegal hits, but in a way, he didn't like this because he knew he could defeat Dree without Liu doing so. Point. Dree, get up. Dree, who grunted in pain, stood up after recovering a bit and frowned as he looked at Liu on the other side of the platform. Until he fully recovered, the referee did not start the match again. Only after ensuring Dree was okay did he restart the fight. Ready. Fight. In an instant, Liu rushed forward again, but at that very moment, he was assaulted by Dree, who initiated aggressive attacks at close range. This put Liu at a disadvantage, and he tried to retreat as the fight became more dangerous. Knowing he couldn't risk getting more injured than he already was, Dre opted for a closer fight, which proved effective in the next few minutes. His punches were forceful, but he knew that with simple defenses and quick attacks, he couldn't win this fight. That's why at some point, he tried to target his opponent's upper body, preparing for the next step in the battle. At one point, Dre frowned, aligned the fingers of his hands, and like a spear, pierced through Liu's defenses and forcefully struck his body, causing him to lower his hands to defend himself. But at that very moment, Dre followed up with an upper kick, hitting Liu's face, who hadn't expected such agility from his opponent. Point, winner. Many celebrated when they saw Dre as the winner, but others noticed the abnormality in Dre's walk, as he descended the platform stairs. Will he be able to recover? Dash, who was relieved that it didn't turn out like the story he knew, couldn't help but worry now that his friend had been injured in the leg. He didn't know how this had happened, but it was concerning to know that he would have to face Cheng in that condition, who was brutal in combat. The kid previously received continuous blows in that area of his leg, and now with these new hits, the pain has started to seep into his muscles. Mr. Kim observed as Dree was taken off the platform alongside Mr. Han. It's true that the injuries on his body were nothing to worry about, but it felt a bit strange that he was injured in the same way Dash remembered. Now he didn't know whether to think that this was due to the changes in the tournament with Dash's presence, and that somehow they aligned so that Dre would face Cheng earlier than planned. If this is the case, it means that as long as he manages to defeat Wu Ping in the semi-final, what would follow is to find out whether Dre wins and continues fighting, or if he is defeated by Cheng. There were very few possibilities for change in the future, which made Dash think about things that could happen at some point. Now that the quarterfinals were about to start with Dash's match against Wu Ping, he had to focus on this, and couldn't approach his friend to provide any emotional support. He'll probably be fine for the next match, Dash didn't believe Dre would give up after this. He was sure he would fight, and the chances of winning were as high as in the original story. It's your turn, time to approach. The worker approached Mr. Kim, and both, along with Dash, approached the platform. Dash turned his head and gave a glance at Wu Ping's position, who looked at him with confidence. Seeing his rival in his distinctive blue and brown uniform, with his most striking feature being his crest-shaped hairstyle, making him look cool. As for Dash, he was thinking about how to defeat this powerful opponent. He knew that Wu Ping had a very tactical and fast-paced fighting style. His fights stood out in this regard, managing to bring down his opponents with ease, even defeating a fighting dragon student with a strong kick to the face, indicating that his combat skills were something to consider. The way he lost to Cheng in the original story demonstrated what a good fighter he really was. 
Although he lost the match, he threw numerous punches and never retreated, showing that he couldn't be easily defeated. Looking at his opponent, Dash shifted his gaze and found Devon in the crowd, who raised her fist, showing him her unconditional support. I win. Dash nodded and positioned himself in the designated spot. Watching the two competitors ready for the fight, the referee initiated the semi-final, which was just one step before the expected final. Ready. Fight. It will be an honor to face you. Dash bowed very respectfully and positioned himself for the fight. Wu Ping's face twitched as the fight began with the opening barely initiated. There was nothing preventing him from starting the fight, as his fighting style was fast, and characterized by quickly finishing matches. Seeing the approaching attack, Dash repelled it by raising his defense, and instantly responded with punches, targeting his opponent's limbs while maintaining a defensive posture. Pump. 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 While being hit by Wu Ping's aggressive blows, Dash began to furrow his brow as he felt increasing pain in his shoulder. At that moment, he slightly lost concentration, which Wu Ping sensed, so the wisest choice was to attack Dash's stomach. Dash wasn't naive, his defense quickly took effect, repelling that potentially dangerous blow, and then he stepped back. On the combat platform, the two figures intertwined, giving an incredible spectacle that shouldn't be possible coming from kids, and that's what began to excite the audience that had come for this. Using two different kung fu styles, each highlighted with different techniques and combat strategies. Dash's eyes moved quickly, analyzing every move of Wu Ping. He had to be aware of each of his opponent's movements to develop a good strategy. In a true fighter, there are instinctive movements, autonomous movements, and those made to harm the opponent. For Dash, using all three at once was something he considered while devising a plan in his mind. Having the ability to simulate a fight in his mind quickly, he used his blocks and occasionally attacked to wear out Wu Ping, who seemed to have no more endurance than he did. The moment he stepped back, Dash received a kick, then another, and a loud thud was heard. Both who had been hurt by this clash of kicks, recoiled with pained expressions on their faces. Seeing how the two had stepped back with a similar movement, the audience couldn't believe this outcome. Enduring the pain, Dash ran towards Wu Ping, who, seeing him approaching, tried to kick again, but then Dash slid across the floor, hit his lower guard, and knocked him to the ground. Being on the ground, Dash, who knew Wu Ping would try to get up immediately, leaned his body toward him and hit his stomach with an elbow. Point. When Dash heard this, he jumped up, walked back to his place, and frowned as the pain in his body began to become more annoying to the point that it was hindering his movements. Wu Ping, who wasn't prepared for that low blow, got up from the ground as sweat dripped from his forehead. The fight in the first few minutes had been intense, making it difficult for him to withstand Dash's blows, who seemed to have a plan. Ready. Fight. The referee saw no harm in the competitors, so he restarted the fight, so that neither of them would have an advantage during this break. Wu Ping smoothed his hair and looked at Dash with an expression full of emotions, knowing that he was facing a competitor who truly had a good fighting instinct. This time, he would opt for a slower fight, he needed to catch his breath and wait for the pain in the muscles of his leg, which had really hurt him, to subside. Dash wasn't much better, by this point, he had injured the front of his calf in his previous fight, and now using brute force, hadn't been the best idea, since the pain had returned. Now. Wu Ping, who let out a shout, jumped toward Dash, delivering a combination of kicks that were met by very effective defensive movements that countered each of his attacks. Facing these kicks that seemed to be very precise, to the horror of the audience, Dash showed no fear and, on the contrary, began to dodge them one by one. Taking distance from his opponent, Dash sighed deeply and extended his hands, imitating the posture of his new kung fu style, that he had reserved to test it with real opponents, and now the time had come to do so. At the moment his posture changed, everyone was puzzled, no one knew what was happening, but others understood what this posture was for. Wu Ping, who stopped for a moment, took a deep breath and began to attack again, but this time more desperate as nothing had worked so far. Zaz. Just as the punch he had thrown was about to hit Dash's chest, he finally made his move, but this time it was faster than before. In a brief instant, he extended his right hand and threw a quick punch to his opponent's shoulder. To everyone's surprise, the victory didn't end with Dash landing a punch. Instead, after that punch, Dash initiated a brutal attack that combined different types of techniques, and Wu Ping, who was desperately trying to defend himself, didn't know what to do. How is he so fast? This scene left the entire audience astonished. Why hadn't Dash used this style of kung fu from the beginning if he was so fast? The answer for Dash was straightforward. He couldn't control the force required to score a point, so he normally held back on his strikes. But this time, he didn't want to hold anything back. 
He wanted to prove at least that he was unbeatable in this tournament, and let everyone know that he hadn't come this far just picking flowers in a lavender field. Seeing Wu Ping's face, it was evident that Dash's style was far superior, and when he thought they were at least equal, it turned out not to be the case. I deserve this as much as anyone. Dash thought as he attacked Wu Ping, who was doing his best to retreat. The moment Dash left nothing in the fight was when he fully demonstrated those pent-up emotions inside him. From his point of view, no one in this tournament had more hunger to win than him, no one could compare. Beyond childish tantrums due to a misunderstanding that could have been solved peacefully if the right terms had been used. But Dash wasn't here to criticize, he was in this place with only one goal in mind to beat everyone, and bring the trophy of this competition home. No one deserves it more than me. Dash, consumed by his desires before dying, unleashed rapid attacks that overwhelmed Wu Ping's defenses, who was already exhausted. Faced with Wu Ping's desperate attack, Dash didn't flinch, and immediately feigned with his left hand to end this fight with a spinning kick that successfully landed on his opponent's chest. Hum. The audience watched as Wu Ping's body was sent flying backward with Dash's powerful kick, and unable to do anything more, Wu Ping's figure fell to the ground. Point, winner. Well, excellent. Mr. Kim clenched his fists, seeing Dash's victory, and secretly celebrated, feeling overwhelmed by the sensations of this fight. Dash, that was brilliant. As Dash walked back toward Mr. Kim Devon, who was a few meters away, shouted excitedly while applauding. This tournament is mine. Dash raised his fist to Devon, who supported him regardless of the people around. Furthermore, Dash's performance today had been more than amazing, since what everyone was witnessing was Kung Fu the martial art Dash had been learning from the beginning. Even after winning a karate tournament, Dash hadn't shown all his combined skills until now. That's why these fights were giving him a lot of experience for later. Leaving the applauding crowd, Dash looked at Mr. Kim, who smiled at him and said, We're in the final Mr. Kim. Aren't I your most incredible student? Mr. Kim ruffled Dash's hair and said, I'm sure Miss Devon is more incredible. Don't let this get to your head, and sit down to rest. Seeing how Mr. Kim, who was usually expressionless most of the time, now showed emotions, Dash felt much happier to have an amazing teacher by his side. The next match would be Dri against Cheng, who was waiting for his opponent to appear on the platform. At this point, many wondered if Dri would participate, so after thinking for a while, Dash asked Mr. Kim if both of them could go where they were. There were many reasons why Dash cared about his friendships before waking up in this reality. But the main one was that he felt everything the same way, and because he wasn't the little devil to his original self without the illness that once plagued him. That's why he cherished Devon, she would be his friend in his past life if he had known her. And right now, Dree was a friend who needed help. Maybe before, this wouldn't matter to him, but Dree trusted him, and he hoped that by the time he left this country, all of Dree's problems would be solved. After arriving at the infirmary, Dash briefly knocked on the door, and a few seconds later, it was opened by Mr. Han, who was surprised to see them here. And your match. Upon hearing Mr. Han's question, Dash smiled and said, I just won. I'm in the final, Mr. Han. That was faster than I thought. Congratulations, kid. You totally deserve to be in the final. Mr. Han, who was typically rigid with his words, did his best to craft this robotic congratulations for Dash. How's Dree? He can only compete once more, but he may not be at his peak for a long time. Still, it should be enough for him to fight in the tournament semi-final. While Mr. Han answered, Dri came out of the room, and upon seeing Dash talking with Mr. Han, he immediately approached and asked, Did you win? I'm in the final, so now it's your turn to face your biggest rival. It's not like that. I was forced to participate in this tournament. But now you love the feeling of participating in a tournament, don't you? Dash's question made Dri grin from ear to ear, remembering the feeling of winning those fights. Now that his match was about to start, they spoke little, and Dri began asking Dash questions on the way about how he had learned such an aggressive kung fu. I'm not usually aggressive outside of real competitions. Do you remember I told you my opponent attacked me from behind? Since then, I don't show mercy in fights. Otherwise, I'm really a saint for everything else. I guess you're right. I hope you forgive me if I can't make it to the semifinals. I'll give it my all, but I'm even more confident knowing you're in the final. You're strong, and I'm sure you'll win. Dash's response was brief, but he was very surprised that Dree would say this to him. The trust one can place in another person can be much or little, all depending on how close they are. For Dash, to have Dree trust him in such a way was very significant. He hadn't thought that he could ever be so trustworthy for someone, and he was genuinely glad about that. While Dri, who felt good with Dash's presence and the fact that he had come all the way to China to be his companion in this tournament, filled him with strength. Are you sure I'll win? Absolutely sure. Don't you believe it? 
Dash looked at Dree, who was more serious than usual, perhaps due to nervousness or something else. I'll win and let you rest. If you win the tournament, it's like I won it too. We belong to the same kung fu school, so the achievement should be for both of us, right? Dash nodded and said, remember to give it your all in this fight. Holding on to grudges is not good, and you have to make it clear by giving it your all in this fight. Beating the one who bothered you might be amazing, but fight knowing that all your problems would be erased in this battle. With not much else to say, Dash advised his friend to leave all his hatred in this fight, and turn it into fuel. Maybe he couldn't do it yet, but the idea of exploding alongside his negative emotions was becoming less present. Now that he has a friend and that his hatred can perhaps be erased in a fight, for Dash, it would be much better to advise him to give it his all, and forget about it afterward, than to never do it, and the problems continue to escalate. By the time Dree heard this, they had arrived at the arena. The audience, who believed Dree would be disqualified, erupted in cheers and excitement at seeing him enter, limping a bit. I'll do my best, Dash, but I'll also fight knowing that you've got my back. Go and finish this tournament. Dash raised his fist and sat near Mr. Kim, who was on the side of Mr. Han. It seems the contestant will continue fighting, so there's nothing more to be done. The presenter left it to the referee to take charge of the match, and stepped down from the platform. Dash's eyes gleamed with excitement, and he truly wished to see his friend win. But if it didn't turn out that way, then everything would fall on him, who was the first finalist. Ready. Fight. Dri looked at Cheng, who stared at him with a hateful expression. Obviously, both had their problems, but Dash believed that everything would be resolved just as it happened in reality. Even if it's not the final, the confrontations remain the same. Dri positioned himself for the fight, and with total seriousness, he began to receive the powerful blows that Cheng sent forcefully at him. This wasn't so complicated to do as he had focused on defense, and delivering key blows to win the fights. And in a few seconds, the impressive blows began to resonate on the combat platform. Yeah. Everyone was focused on the match with great excitement, seeing these incredible fighters. As the confrontation unfolded, Dri's leg injury was evident, so many didn't expect anything remarkable in the fight. However, everyone found out they were wrong as they witnessed Dri's performance, exchanging blows with the furious Cheng. But just when everyone thought Dri was holding his own against Cheng, a powerful kick landed on his chest, knocking him straight off the combat platform. Dash, who remembered a similar scenario in his fight, wasn't surprised. He simply sat there in silence, enjoying this incredible spectacle. It was like watching a movie in the highest possible quality, but even better. So, he preferred to rest and be part of the audience now. Point. As expected after that blow, Cheng took the lead with one point over Dri, who was recovering from the kick with Mr. Han's assistance. Show him that you're better than that, Dri. When Cheng saw that Dri could continue, he filled with a sense of anxiety and urgency. Dash could see in his eyes that he was desperate to win the fight. He was eager to prove to his idiotic master that he was the best student in his kung fu school, and that a kid who had been learning martial arts for less time, couldn't beat him. There's no doubt that Dri has monstrous talent in martial arts. Being able to fight at this level with so little experience is unthinkable even for me. Dash had been training longer than Dri, and it seemed like it took his friend less time to become so good than it took him. That kid's kung fu is different from yours. There's no comparison in a long match. Mr. Kim didn't agree with his student's words. Are you okay? Mr. Han, who was close to Dri, asked him as he got up. But Dri didn't feel like responding, he felt frustrated for being thrown off the platform in such a humiliating way. He immediately climbed back up and positioned himself to continue the fight. Spitting a strong breath of air through his throat, Dri knew that if he didn't score a point now, it would be challenging to look his friend in the eye again. So, this time, he would be much more aggressive to achieve a tie. Ready. Fight. When the referee moved the flags, Dri couldn't wait and started moving as soon as he saw Cheng initiating his attack. Since he had no plans to back down, Dri faced him. Pump. When Cheng tried to hit Dri's chest, he blocked the attacks and thrust his fists upward, leaning his body at the same time. However, this gave his opponent the opportunity to hit him in the face. Still, Dri didn't stop and leaned his body, swept his leg, and taking advantage of Cheng's exposed posture, he attacked. Oj. Dri's kick successfully brought Cheng down, and when he tried to stand up immediately after, he was overwhelmed by Dri, who landed a powerful punch to his face. Point. At that moment, Dri's concentration entered an incredible phase in the fight, and Cheng, who felt even more desperate, couldn't understand it. As the fight unfolded, Dash understood one thing. Some things couldn't really be changed. He didn't know if it was because, regardless of his intervention in this tournament, things could happen the same way, but he felt very disappointed to know that victory was decided. 
It had been a long time since Dash had awakened in a new life, but he still vaguely remembered the result of this fight. So, seeing Dri kick Sheng with a powerful kick and win the victory, he knew that some things had to happen. He really won Dash stood up and applauded, seeing that the fight was over. When he saw Dri defeat Sheng, Dash was surprised to see both of them shaking hands after the fight. Does that mean both have left their problems behind, right? Dash looked at Mr. Kim, who seemed more aware of things, and upon seeing him nod, he understood. By the time Cheng descended from the combat arena, Dash despised his seat and walked toward where the audience was. Does that mean we won? Zack, he now saw two finalists, one being Dash from the same Kung Fu school, asked his daughter. The prize should be for Sakura Bushido Devon nodded a bit distracted, knowing that theoretically, they had won. Just as she was wondering if Dash and Dri would fight, a familiar figure appeared in the crowd in the distance. When she made eye contact with him, she was surprised that Dash was signaling to her. What do you want? Come here before you miss something incredible. Devon hesitated a bit but got up and ran to where Dash was. As soon as she reached his side, she asked, what's happening? Something tells me it's time for the Kung Fu Masters. Just look over there. Dash pointed to where Cheng and his master were. By the time Devon turned her head, she could see with her own eyes how Cheng's master intended to hit him, but just when he was about to do it, Mr. Han appeared behind him to stop him. That master is a scumbag Devon watched as, from one moment to another, a fight broke out between teachers, and her eyes widened when she saw that the fight was getting more intense. Come on, Mr. Kim, join the fight. Mr. Kim, who was next to students from other kung fu schools protecting them, widened his eyes as he saw Dash and Devon watching the fight from the best position possible in this place. When did you leave? Mr. Kim wondered as he watched Dash, who was pointing at the fight and shouting something he couldn't understand. Do you want me to stop that fight? There are things in life that can't be stopped. By the time you understand that, you'll know more about life. Mr. Kim thought as he moved people away so they wouldn't be affected. Come on, Mr. Kim, show that powerful kick to that madman. Dash shouted excitedly as he watched Mr. Han move with skill and agility. Devon rolled her eyes and muttered, he can't hear you, and besides, regardless of the context of the fight, it would be unfair to have a two against one situation. Yes, but that would make it more exciting, it would show that at Sakura Bushido, we're more than just family. It's a shame we didn't have flyers, we would make our kung fu school famous here. Dash smiled disappointedly, he knew not everything could be perfect, but he didn't mind. Today was a wonderful day, and watching that fight between Master Li and Master Han was incredible. The outstanding skills of Mr. Han preceded him, he could move from side to side, dodging blows and dominating the fight without even using force as a response. It seems to be over Devon's side in relief. It wasn't pleasant to see one teacher fight against another, it seemed somewhat disrespectful. But she had seen that Mr. Han had taken the initiative not to exert force, so after defeating Master Li for the second time, the fight stopped. Hey Cheng. Dash on the side shouted to Master Li's students, and when he looked, Dash said, Mr. Han might start teaching Kung Fu, you should come since it'll be one of the best schools. Cheng nodded and withdrew after bowing to Mr. Han as a sign of respect. At least, they had learned something very important today that would help them for the rest of their lives. So, will the final continue? Devon looked at Dash and asked after he remained silent. I don't know if Dri can, I'm afraid that if he takes a step forward and fights, he'll be lame for life. Dash, come now. Mr. Kim's voice sounded very serious, but just as he was about to take a break before the final fight, Dri looked at Mr. Han and said, I want to surrender, Mr. Han. I can't keep fighting with my leg like this, and even less against Dash, he would crush me. Are you sure? Dri nodded and said, originally, I wanted to resolve issues with those guys, and now that I achieved a victory, it doesn't mean much. I'll try again next year. Mr. Han nodded and walked toward the tournament administrators to inform them of this decision, without making people wait any longer. On the other side of the platform, Dash sighed with a bitter feeling and said, why do I feel like this isn't a victory? This is a victory, why not see it and feel it like that? Dash looked at Devon and raised his arms, expressing that he didn't understand. To be honest, this was what he expected after Dri won the fight. He didn't know what position to take when fighting a friend who was injured, and this is the best result, but he didn't feel it as a great victory, which is what it was. I don't know, I just feel that way, Dash muttered as he walked alongside Mr. Kim, who had climbed onto the platform. Who else wasn't excited about that fight? The whole event has been incredible, but unfortunately, due to injuries, competitor Dri Parker withdraws, leaving Dash Hale as the winner. Please give a big applause to the new dragon warrior. Dash's eyes flashed with a happy yet empty feeling, but he still bowed and received the trophy, which was enormous.
Many other things would be handled by Mr. Kim, so Dash descended with Devin and gave her a hug. Congratulations, Dash. Those were incredible fights. It seems the event ends after this, am I wrong? Dash looked at Mr. Kim, who was talking to some people, and said, Maybe. Are we leaving? Aren't you going to say goodbye? Devin, who was holding Dash's trophy, asked as she walked toward the exit. We'll talk later, we're not leaving yet, and he seems to have a special meeting with his little girlfriend. Devin, who heard this, nodded and walked toward the exit while looking at the large trophy in her hands. Your victories are my victories. Devin smiled, remembering that phrase, and to be honest, now she felt that she had won. I wish I could have fought Dre fairly, I wouldn't have felt good winning knowing he was injured. Dash stepped out of the venue where the tournament had taken place, and looked up at the clear sky. You're injured too, with your shoulder and leg. Isn't that similar to what your friend had? Devin asked, annoyed that Dash was downplaying his victory. He had won the tournament, what was wrong with disqualifying a fighter due to injuries sustained in multiple rounds of competition. Of course, Dash was happy to have won and proven once again that all he needed to be a winner was a strong and healthy body. Now that Devin mentioned it that way, Dash supposed he might be wrong, and perhaps this wasn't his true victory. Maybe, at some point in the future, he would face Tree in a tournament, and maybe even Cheng. But for now, all he wanted was to rest, the blows, despite not showing it, had taken a toll on him. Still, there was a banquet-like meal planned for that day where everyone, including Dree's mother and his charming friend, was invited. Whether they attended or not was not Dash's concern as he began to enjoy a good meal with the people closest to him. It seems Mr. Kim is back, is there anything new we don't know? Dash won, but he says he doesn't feel it's a victory. Should I consider scolding him a bit? Well, he should consider that more deeply for himself. I've been told the tournament will happen again next year, and you have the chance to defend your title, but that depends on you. Very well, then let's eat. After seeing Dash in higher spirits, they got into the car that came to pick them up and headed to the restaurant. They didn't think about anything related to martial arts after that meal. On that same day, Dash began to feel pain all over his body, but for him, it was a victorious feeling, something telling him that all his effort was because he was alive. During his training, he had dreamed of participating in the Dragon Warrior Tournament, wanting to know if his skills were enough to stand out in the world of martial arts. Now he realized that he did have talent, beyond the hard work that not everyone could surpass. He believed that at least a bit of talent was needed to get as far as he had come. By nightfall, Dash and Devin started talking in the group they had from the dojo, which was, in reality, a kung fu school. All the members were students of Sakura Bushido, and upon learning they were winners of the tournament in China, they all got excited. Hard work was unique, but working with the thrill of overcoming someone filled them with a the tough will to continue training, even when Mr. Kim wasn't around. At Mr. Han's house a few days after the tournament, Dash had visited him before knowing his decision about the proposal he had made. I managed to take about 30 photos of your whole match, the most outstanding ones are marked with a heart, and the others are discarded, Devin showed her phone to Dash, who began to look at the photos she had taken. Wow, all this will go straight into my documentary when I'm 50, Dash murmured while taking Devin's phone and seeing those incredible photos. Do you think so? Then you should pay $10 for each photo. No photographer was interested in taking pictures of you when you were the star, so you should consider that my photos are worth more than gold itself. That sounds good, I'll pay you when I'm a millionaire Dash nodded serenely, believing that Devin would forget about this in a few years, so as time passed, the photos would be free. You can come in now, come closer. Mr. Han's voice came from inside his house. Thank you for receiving us, Mr. Han. I must say we managed to record a bit of the fight you had with that master, and if we put that video on a huge screen, it will attract students like fish in a net. Devin widened her eyes upon hearing Dash's words, so she nudged him lightly to make him stop talking so casually with someone they barely knew. That wasn't a fight, I was containing an anger-filled man, Mr. Han now understood why Dre was friends with this boy, they were not so different after all. Look at this place, they were selling it at a low price because the owner can't maintain it, and taxes should be an unnecessary expense. So, we would buy this place for the kung fu school you would manage here. Pulling out a large smart tablet, Dash showed him the photos of the place that Mr. Kim had presented by request of his father, so he was very excited about it. That is Dash raised his hand and said, Don't worry, Mr. Han, all the remodeling is included in the contract. You will be the headmaster of that school, have the complete right to hire more teachers, and accept students as you see fit. In return, you will have 30% of the profits and total rewards from tournaments with monetary prizes. I really Devin, who was watching how interested Dash was in opening the Kung Fu school in this place, said, Many need it, those kids who didn't know about true Kung Fu need a real teacher. 
You could be that, you should be the guide for all those kids. So, I dash raised his hand and said, Think it over, Mr. Han, you could consider your answer for a few minutes. Mr. Han sighed and finally said, Now that these kids let him speak, I will open a kung fu school under the name Sakura Bushido, teach the principles of true kung fu, and accept your business proposal. But don't expect my method to work on everyone. No problem, Mr. Han, here's the contract. Dash smiled with happiness, knowing that he now had an incredible master in his kung fu school, even though it would be here in China. In his final days in China, Dash spent his time training with Mr. Han, accompanied by Devin, who had also been training very hard after witnessing the combat levels in this country. You need to flow more with your movements, remember that everything is in your mind, and you can achieve anything with it, Mr. Han instructed Devin's movements, considering her the most rigid. During this time, they cleaned up the place after doing the shopping, and the renovations of the area where the Sakura Bushido school would be located had begun. With little time left in this place, Dash asked Mr. Han to evaluate his kung fu, and any advice he had would be welcome. It's not that he didn't trust Mr. Kim, on the contrary, he wanted to know, in the eyes of a good master like Mr. Han, how good he would be here in a few years. Mr. Han, do you know that Sakura Bushido is a karate champion? I don't mean to brag, but I think I'm starting to become famous, Dash was sitting on the side of the mat, watching Devin perform her movements. In that tournament where you got hit on the forehead. Mr. Han pointed to his face and smiled nonchalantly. Yes, whatever. Dri couldn't continue participating after a leg injury, so I'm the star of Sakura Bushido, Devon doesn't count in this discussion. Do you want me to give you a beating? Last time, I won the fight with a powerful Jiu-Jitsu lock. Do you really want to fight here? Dash had been resting, so he couldn't train much. His pastime was making Devon angry so that she would train with much more emotion in her attacks. You two have a very strange way of getting along, you won't last long married if you keep this up, Mr. Han shook his head as he walked away to continue working in the small places of the venue. What did that old man say? Devin looked at Dash, who had fallen silent. I really didn't understand him, he asked me what he said Dash murmured, avoiding Devin's gaze, who was suspicious of him. If you don't tell me, then I'll torture you until you talk. Devin, who was envisioning Dash's teasing, couldn't take it anymore and ran towards him. By the time Dash looked at Devon, he opened his eyes wide when she fell on him like a meteorite. Straddling Dash, she began pressing him to the ground and asked, Can I take advantage of the fact that you're injured to give you a good beating? Do you want to keep playing? Dash opened his eyes wide and murmured, he spoke in Chinese, how do you expect me to understand what he said? Oh Devon nodded, and just as she was about to move, footsteps were heard outside. Mr. Han. Devin and Dash looked toward the entrance and saw many boys their age, they all wore regular clothes, and the most surprising thing was that they were the students who had been under Master Li. Cheng, who entered last, turned his head to where everyone was looking, and was surprised to see that the champion of the tournament from a few days ago, was being pressed to the ground by a girl in training uniform. Cheng, welcome, my friend Dash smiled as he waved to the guests. Devin looked at those Chinese and asked, what the hell are you looking at? Are you looking for Mr. Han, or do you want to fight with this lady? That Wei Cheng nervously looked at Devon and said in better English than Mr. Han's, We've come to see the master of this kung fu school, is he around somewhere? Ah, you've come to enroll. Devon released Dash and stood up, leaving him on his side. Mr. Han is in that room, you can go look for him. Dash, who got up with difficulty after being choked by Devon, walked to a vending machine and took out some water bottles, while watching the boys enter. My effort was worth it, Dash murmured as he smiled from ear to ear. I didn't think they'd come, do you think your friend will take it well? Devin walked towards Dash and took a water bottle. He should take it well, he doesn't hate Cheng, and they ended up fine after the last tournament. Dash knew that Cheng wasn't a bad guy, he had just made bad decisions, and now that everything was over, it was time for him and Dri to unite. Watching this whole process as mere spectators, Dash looked away and said, You've improved a lot in Kung Fu, you're surely the best version of me in female form. Although I would probably beat you if I were a woman, I must admit you're very good. Devon turned her gaze to Dash and said, If you're trying to make me feel good, you're not succeeding at all. Setting the jokes aside, Dash smiled and said sincerely, You're amazing, Devon. I'm sure that by the time we enter middle school, no girl will be as incredible in fights as you are, rest assured. You should have started with that point. Are you going to train, or will you just sit there? Devon got up a bit nervous and walked back to the mat to continue training. Dash, on the other hand, stayed seated, he was still injured, so he couldn't train. Mr. Han, accept us as your students, Cheng said as he bowed to Mr. Han, and the other boys behind him did the same. Mr. Han, who had just fixed a problem with the light, looked at the boys who appeared out of nowhere and remained silent. 
We want to learn true kung fu, be our mentor, please. Mr. Han, seeing Cheng's earnest gaze, smiled after a while and said, All right, let's sit down. For Mr. Han, these kids were not to blame for being the way they were, because they had a very evil master. The only way not to continue letting this happen was to teach them properly, and now that he had the opportunity, he didn't plan to reject them. Dri, when he learned that Cheng would be in Mr. Han's kung fu school, first thought about it. Still, after knowing that he should at least strive for a change, he was the first to step forward. Dash didn't have the opportunity to exchange blows with Cheng due to his injuries, but they both agreed to meet in some competitions, eventually leading to a face-off. In the darkness of the night, a few hours before Dash and the others would return home because they couldn't sleep, many were resting in things that entertained them. By then, Dash had bid farewell to Dri, who, after some pauses, had become friends with the ruthless Cheng, and their friendship would eventually improve. Of course, that would be Mr. Han's job. Dash, on his part, was sitting on the balcony of the hotel where he was staying, and Devon was by his side, sipping a hot drink as they together gazed at the stars. I guess all of this, in the end, is not a dream, he could feel the scent in the air, the deep breaths he took whenever he was alone, something he had been doing unconsciously. Filling his lungs with air and not feeling any kind of weakness was something that filled him with peace. Just out of curiosity, upon returning home, he wanted to get a complete checkup to make sure he was healthy. He couldn't help it, the fear he felt of being tormented again by that incurable disease was something that worried him. Throughout this time, he had achieved and done things he had never thought possible before, so losing it all in an instant was not something he wanted to feel again. He had friends, close loved ones, and parents who had never scolded or distanced him from his dreams. Everything was like a dream, something magical that would only happen in some delusion after death. But after suffering so much, crying and laughing, he knew that he had no illusions, and this was reality, his own reality that had been granted to him. Do you still have those problems? Just a little, but I think I'm overcoming them, Dash replied as he looked at Devin beside him, who was stargazing. He had relied on her to tell her all his problems. That mental feeling of being alone had completely disappeared, and it was something that was only due to Devin, who silently supported him. He had never thought that all he needed was to be accompanied, to feel loved and cared for. Being alone cools the heart and bitter the feelings, but here, having lovely people by his side, that feeling was not present all the time. And is Kung Fu helping you? Although I use it for other purposes, it's helping me a lot. Not only do I look more handsome, but also in the future, I'll be the envy of every man. Dash joked lightly after realizing that as a man, there were others who were really attractive, and he wasn't stating the truth. Yes, I don't expect to see who will put up with you being the way you are. Dash smiled and asked, how about you? Talking only about me makes me feel a bit bad. Don't you want to say something now? I'm still looking for the words for everything we've been living together, and I still can't explain how I feel. Dash, who was looking at the fireflies, inexplicably felt at peace talking about these things, so hearing something from Devon was becoming aware of oneself and others' problems. I also believe I can't explain how magical all of this has been, Dash nodded upon hearing that. Devon felt very calm next to Dash, and that's when she understood that she was living a life that very few have been able to achieve in life. I'm happy, every moment I breathe, I'm truly grateful, and I wanted to continue like this Dash thought as he looked at the moon and felt the cool breeze running through his body. This time, he felt alive, and everything he had done was completely worth it. Now, he could not only say that he was alive, but also that he had achieved everything he set out to do on a hospital bed. It wasn't easy, but in the process, he sought a way for everything to be worthwhile. In this new opportunity, he would not reject anything that had been granted to him, he wanted to be grateful for life, and hoped it would continue to be this way. When he thought about all this, he looked at Devon and said, Devon, let's keep striving. I hope you don't give up at the end of the road. Someday, the moment will come when we shine in front of the whole world. We'll shine together the driving force that ignited a fire in my heart was the anger of feeling weak, lying on a hospital bed most of the time until my death. When I was young, I was just a scared child who struggled for breath with each inhale. Like many other kids, there wasn't much difference in my case, but what set me apart from the rest, is that I was abandoned by those I thought were my family. But I don't blame them, for even on the brink of death, they continued to support me, never ceasing to provide money for my hospital care. If it weren't for them, I might have died much earlier than when it actually happened. A lifetime of suffering was enough for me to judge people who waste their healthy bodies, and disdain others for their appearance, skin color, or tone of voice. It seemed ridiculous to think that I would never have the chance to escape that hell, but everything changed when I died and woke up in a completely healthy body my body, if I had never had that lung disease. I truly began to seize this new opportunity that fate had given me. 
At the age of 12, I won a karate tournament that I continued to dominate for the next 4 years without losing a single match. The only 5-time champion for 5 consecutive years, not counting the tournaments I had won in China. At 12, I became a major tournament champion, earning the title of the Dragon Warrior. Throughout those years, during vacations, I participated in tournaments in Japan and South Korea, never losing a single battle. Accompanied by Devin, who had also won countless championships abroad and was a three-time karate tournament champion without losing a single match except for a few overseas. The only reason she didn't win more championships in the All Valley, is that she didn't participate, she had been ill during the tournament week and couldn't compete, which was a real headache at the time. Perhaps because the illness wasn't real but a normal condition in women, Dash could participate in tournaments and win on her behalf. It can be said that over the past 4 to 5 years, the life I have been living has been fulfilling, but there's a small problem no matter what I did, I wasn't famous. I could have won countless tournaments, but Sakura Bushido never surpassed 35 core students. Most dropped out halfway through the year, others in the first months, and some didn't even enroll. The truth was unfortunate, but Dash, who remained the Dragon Warrior, didn't care about these meaningless things. As long as he kept winning, he would eventually lead Sakura Bushido to world championships. But that event had not yet presented itself, so Dash, who was now thinking about other things, deviated a bit from any other goal he had already achieved. Time flows like water, and in the blink of an eye, five years had passed. Although numerous things had happened, none of them were as noteworthy as to be mentioned. Beep beep. Beep beep. Early in the morning, Dash woke up to the alarm set for 6 in the morning, and as soon as he opened his eyes, he began preparing to jog a bit. Wearing a sportswear with Sakura Bushido logos, Dash left the house and started running near the residence where he had lived his entire life. By the way, now that he had two younger brothers, one four years old and the other two, it was a bit frustrating to be at home, since all they wanted was to stick to him like glue. Hoo hoo hoo. As Dash ran, he could feel the cold air rushing into his throat quickly and expelling just as fast within a few seconds. He had stopped feeling tired from these simple morning runs, as he was in good condition, even if he didn't train very often now, as he did other things besides training, such as participating in the high school debate group. Devin had dragged him into that group only to end up arguing with others in the various debates they held. There was even a time when he almost got into a fight with a girl from another school, after she called him crazy over an argument. Remembering all those crazy events, Dash just smiled as he returned home after 30 minutes of moderate jogging. Should I get a little dog? That was Dash's first thought as he entered the house and headed to his room for a quick shower, not before practicing a bit. In his spacious room, Dash demonstrated a series of perfectly executed punch techniques that flowed naturally with the movement of his feet. The echoes of the punches could be heard in his room, demonstrating how effective and fast they were thrown. After finishing the practice, Dash stopped while stabilizing his breathing. Excellent taking off his sweat-soaked clothes, Dash, he now measured around 6 feet, headed for the shower and sighed as he felt the water running over all his muscles. Truth be told, he never trained to have all the muscles in his body exposed. His intention was simply to surpass himself and nothing more. But in the process, he had to gain muscle mass to increase his strength and reinforce the muscles in his body. Dash, with a very attractive face, kept the same messy hairstyle and changed into a simple set of clothes, before grabbing a quick bite before heading to school. Are you done? As soon as Dash came down from his room again, he saw his mother sitting at the table having lunch. I just finished now. Did Dad go straight to work? Dash walked to the kitchen and brought a plate of cookies. Yes, now that you have a driver's license and an incredible yet dangerous car, you must be careful not to overdo it and respect all the stop signs. Elena didn't look at Dash because she knew perfectly well that he would get angry about his son's poor diet. Don't worry, mom. Instead of crashing into a child, I'll crash into an old man gotta differentiate things. You know I hate those dark humor jokes you make. When will you stop making them? Elena sighed as she adjusted her glasses. It's an innocent joke, mom. I have to go to school now. Dash bid farewell to his mother with a kiss on the cheek and left the house. Now their relationship was much closer, due to his age, Dash discovered that he didn't have to be very strict with his behavior, and decided to be more open with his parents. Exiting his house, Dash spotted his 1963 Ford Mustang Boss 429 the car his father had gifted him when he turned 15, and had supposedly kept secret all this time. This car was a beauty, a classic that everyone has seen at some point, due to how incredible and exclusive they are. One could identify them just by their distinctive grey color, two black stripes running from the front to the rear, and the incredible roar of the V8 engine a beautiful car representing speed in a single machine. Hello, my dear companion, let's take you for a ride. 
mumbled Dash as he sat in the driver's seat and started the vehicle. Vroom, the powerful sound of the engine was a sweet auditory melody for classic car enthusiasts. Of course, Dash was indifferent to what he drove, but he couldn't deny that he had a beautiful car. As he always did, Dash drove to Devon's house to pick her up, and from there, they headed to school. This whole process made Dash wonder if going to school was enjoyable, as the things he could do there were limited. He knew that being in the first year might bring some novelty, but so far, all he could see were kids bullying others, and many cases of boring fights that led nowhere. When Dash parked at Devon's house, he didn't get out, he simply turned off the car engine and sent a simple message to his friend. The frog has reached the well, come out, and let's go to the reformatory. As soon as Dash sent the message, Devon, wearing a large black sweatshirt, emerged from the house and walked towards the other door of the car without even stopping. How was your weekend? Dash's question didn't catch Devon by surprise. This weekend, she had spent it at home reading and working on research about an important topic for the debate club, so they didn't meet as they usually did. Don't even mention it, it was a complete headache to research animal experimentation. Devon, who enjoyed debating, had to team up with Dash, who had refused from the start to research for the debates, if he joined that club. She knew this wouldn't stop Devon, who without a second thought dragged him into the club and told him she would take care of everything. Now, thinking about it, she feels a bit guilty for not helping him, but there were more incredible things than arguing with words, according to the old Dash. We're on the opposing team, I have some valid arguments that could serve us for that debate. Dash first went to a cafe to stay awake, because if he didn't have some caffeine, he would fall asleep in class. On the way, Devin reflected. Experimenting with animals is justified when the research is fair, but some do it unjustifiably, like experimenting with chemical weapons. There's no data on those, so they won't have much to go against us. Dash furrowed his brows and asked, According to what I read this weekend, practically all Nobel Prize winners in medicine since 1901 have relied on data obtained from animal models. That's obvious, we share 95% of our genes with mice, making them an effective model to apply to humans, Devon said, intervening with real data on the issue of animal experimentation. Do you think we'll win? Dash frowned as he drove by the window and ordered two lats. Absolutely, those arguing against won't have many valid arguments to oppose animal experimentation. Devon was confident that they would win this debate. When Dash passed by the window, he took the coffees and handed them to Devon, who was reviewing some notes. To be honest, the two were the only ones who could stand each other without instinctively attacking. There are chocolate donuts, do you want one? We shouldn't eat so much sugar in the morning. Do you have any idea of what we need to study for the debate? We just need to divide the arguments into three points. Medical, social, and human evolution. There's no need for anything else in this debate, don't stress too much. Dash, who eventually ordered a box of chocolate donuts, also handed it to Devon, who was totally lost in her morning food obsession. We exercise a lot, eating donuts will only give us a bit more energy for the debate later. Dash said as he took a big bite of the huge donut in his hand. Devon shook her head and, after smiling, began eating without paying more attention to Dash, who was driving. As they drove, there was no need to rush to school, so they took the long route, and when they arrived, they still had plenty of time to plan. Do you know the guy we got on the team? Devin walked alongside Dash by the lockers and asked, not remembering his name. Dash turned his head and muttered, I have no idea. We left that day because we were in a hurry to go to that new restaurant, damn, now I remember, his name was Burton, Dash furrowed his brow, as he tried to remember exactly what he had forgotten. Are you sure, or are you just assuming? Devon asked as she stopped to grab the things she would need for the next classes. Dash looked at her calmly and said, I just remembered. However, before she could respond, he added, but I've never spoken to him before. Wouldn't it be a bit awkward for everyone? It's nothing surprising. We spend most of our time in the dojo training, so it's normal not to know almost anyone. But that doesn't matter, right? Devon smiled as she walked towards the classroom. Of course, it doesn't matter. Dash smiled as he followed closely. Things would normally be stifling for many by not socializing or integrating into the more famous interaction groups within the school, but these were things that both Dash and Devon didn't care about at all. Things for both of them were going at different paces, so there was nothing to worry about. Dash wasn't uncomfortable talking to others, it's just that this situation always went the other way around. As they walked, Dash's indifferent eyes noticed a group of three playing in a dangerous way, and just as they passed by, one of them threw his friend who was about to hit Devon. At that moment, Dash moved, took Devon by the arm, and dragged her forcefully to his side, making sure that she, who was focused on her notes, didn't get hurt. Idiot, a bit more, and she would have ended up on the ground. Hey, stupid monkey, shouldn't you be more careful right here where you're not the only ones walking? 
Ashley Stevens' arm and approached the nearest guy, who was a bit robust. Do you let him talk to you like that, Brooks? The guy behind him mocked when he saw Dash, who seemed not to know who he was messing with. Let me talk to him this way. Brooks approached Dash and murmured these words very closely. Not worth it, Dash. They're just a group of idiots with no self-respect. Devin took Dash by the arm to prevent him from getting into trouble. Over the previous years, she had taken care to prevent Dash from getting into fights because of her and getting expelled. Many didn't know, but the only reason to make her friend angry, was to mess with people he considered close or create unnecessary problems. Did you hear your girlfriend? Get out of my sight right now. Brooks sneered as he said this and looked at his friends who each took a side. Dash growled in a cold way, don't play tough with me. Remember, you're the idiot who's always with Kyler, so let me give you some advice. Don't bother me and get out of my vicinity before my hands move to rip your teeth out of your mouth. Many people knew what was going on, so they stopped, and some others took out their cell phones, and started recording in case an interesting fight happened. Brooks, who frowned trying to remember who was in front of him but didn't have time for that, and at that moment, just as he was about to intervene, his friend's voice came from his side, do you want me to help you? Kyler appeared with a group of friends, and among them was Samantha LaRusso, who had disappeared from the karate tournaments after her defeat against Devin. She was smiling while talking to her friends, and didn't notice who was in front of her, since she could only see his back. This isn't your problem, but it could be. Are you really interested in making this much bigger than it should be? That's a damn apology is more than enough, don't you think you're making this more flashy than it should be? For Dash, fighting with bullies was like fighting against a weed they don't disappear if you ignore them, but you can put a stop to them, which is what Dash always did. Kyla frowned not knowing whose voice it was and said, it seems there's a misunderstanding, and you want to make things bigger. Are you really smart, or are you just a clown seeking attention? Samantha, who was not aware of what happened, said, why don't you just leave and forget about this? Many are getting uncomfortable with this situation in the early hours of class. Devin stepped away from Dash's side, and upon seeing Samantha, she said, LaRusso, why don't you consider minding your own problems, and not pretend that everyone is willing to give up their problems for the comfort of others? I was just trying Samantha, who recognized Devin for being a multiple-time champion in that tournament she participated in once, fell silent. And just as she was about to respond, Yasmin spoke and said, you better consider choosing your words wisely, dear. Why don't you step forward and show me how it's done? Devin asked Yasmin defiantly. Dash, who only wanted to put a stop to things before they started messing with him like he was a toy, shook his head and said, forget it, this is pointless. He had agreed with Devin never to back down in a similar situation, but also not to fight, as that would ruin their reputation as experienced fighters. But knowing that sometimes people don't process information correctly, for their own good, it's better to let things go and step aside. Now you're chickening out. Brooks, who hadn't seen Dash's face because of his hairstyle that wasn't a hairstyle, gathered a bit of courage. But before he could do anything, Devin took Dash's hand and pulled him away before everyone really started regretting messing with him. She could be aggressive, but she knew when to stop, and now was the time. Let's get out of here. Devin didn't want any more attention, so she left dragging Dash, who finally gave up all discussion and turned around. See you later. Brooks shouted as he mocked along with his friends. I hope you don't if you don't want to get hurt. Shouldn't you know him? He's Dash Hill. If I were you, I'd avoid any conflict with him. Samantha regretted interfering, but there was nothing she could do since she couldn't go back and change everything. Dash Hill. The same one who fought with some college guys near the school. Yasmin smiled and asked as she walked away, what do you think? Is it really worth avoiding me putting a stop to them? Dash fixed his gaze on Devin, who was pulling him along by the hand, disregarding the stairs. You know perfectly well that they would win by just getting you expelled from school for a few days. Unlike them, you have a future. Devin didn't stop even when she felt Dash's hand squeezing hers tightly. With his head down, Dash looked at the ground, and in a way, Devin was right. Being associated with martial arts, any kind of comment on the internet about him abusing his abilities just to bother others, would be more than enough for social media to explode. Today, social media is a very sharp weapon, most of the time wielded without awareness. One could be an accomplice to murder or a cause of it without realizing that it's because of a comment made on the internet. Social pressure was a powerful thing of which many were unaware, and if, for some reason, the media found out that someone like him was involved in this kind of trouble, he would not only be expelled from the highly esteemed tournaments, but he would also lose many of those who invested in him. In all instances, Devin had to admit that Dash got very angry when it came to her. Now that she thinks about it, she had always treated it as something natural, but that was definitely not something everyone did unless they were a couple. 
Devon had been lately very nervous because she didn't know what it would feel like to have a boyfriend. She had never thought about it before and believed there was no need to. But lately, talking to her mother led to a conversation about whether she should seize what she had now, or she might lose it in the future. Normally, young people became interested in having a girlfriend around the age of 15, although it really happens much earlier but not seriously. For Dash, this interest should be common and normal. Devon was restless about this, but she didn't want to show it. Of course, there was another way for all these concerns to disappear, and that was to ask openly. But even when she wanted to bring up the subject with Dash, she could never seem to do it. At the end of the day, everything seemed as if it didn't matter. She had never had these thoughts until she saw many with partners, and there were girls who were directly in love with Dash, so this sense of urgency began to overwhelm her thoughts. Devon snorted and said, this is complete crap Dash raised his hand and, holding hers, said, once again, thanks for preventing me from hitting bullies, my dear guardian. I could even end up attacked on social media for that. You could start by letting go of my hand. Rumors have been a bit agitated lately for any minimal thing that happens in front of their boring lives. Devon said as she tried to pull her hand away from Dash but failed in the process. Dash smiled a bit knowing what she meant and responded with a question, who besides the two of us cares? Didn't you say one of your big goals was to have a girlfriend? Devon looked at him as if she expected an answer. Did I tell you that? The calm on Dash's face began to disappear as his heart started to race, and feeling that sensation, he asked, so, do you want it to be you? Dash at this moment meant whether Devon wanted to be his girlfriend, something that earned him Devon's gaze. She never expected that calm response from him, he seemed so indifferent that she came to believe that this was a joke, so she responded, do you think that would work for us? How can we know that without trying it first? Dash raised an eyebrow and stared at Devon, waiting for her response. I don't want to sound pessimistic, but romance between friends always ends badly. In the end, they break up, and that friendship they had is forgotten. Devon handed her things to Dash and said, first, help me carry my things. I need to go to the bathroom. Dash, who stood near the entrance of the classroom that belonged to them for the first class, looked at Devon's back and murmured, who assures you that I would give up so easily. It was said that falling in love with someone without intentions of groping, is the most villian kind of love. Dash didn't know when it happened, but he knew that the sincere friendship he had with Devon was being erased by feelings of love for her. Those silly things that many believed in when having a female friend as a male had never happened to Dash. To be honest, his friendship with Devon was never based on infatuation or the need to have someone by his side. On the contrary, their friendship had been one of the best one could have in life. But like any young teenager, feelings of love happen suddenly, and once they start, they can't be stopped. Dash, who calmed his heart, shook his head and said, you crazy, Dash. On the contrary, Devon, who had entered the women's restroom, approached the sink and splashed her face with water, which fell boiling. She didn't know if what she felt was what they called romance. She had never believed she would feel something like this, especially not with Dash, since they had known each other since childhood. By the time Devon returned, classes had started moments later, and in the process, the interesting thing about all this was that Dash could learn and experience what he had once desired, but now that feeling had been suppressed by boredom. He supposed all his energy had been invested in the first five years before returning to life with something new in excitement. Looking around, Dash observed each of the boys, and everything seemed extremely normal. Are we going to train today? We can grab something to eat at your place if we swing by for food after school, Dash murmured these words, so that only Devon could hear him. Devon, who was focused on writing, turned her head toward Dash, who was sitting right beside her, and murmured after returning her gaze to the front, don't you want to go home with your brothers? They have mom, they don't need a brother who only thinks about Kung Fu Dash sighed softly, and this caused the pages of Devon's book to lift slightly. Devon frowned but didn't say anything. She didn't want to do something that would draw attention from the whole class, so she stayed silent for a few minutes. However, after losing all concentration due to a bored Dash, she reached under the long table and hit him in the ribs. Ah! Dash shouted, alarming the entire class. Devon, next to him, jumped in surprise and looked at Dash, who had let out a sudden cry. Is something wrong Mr. Hale? The teacher was well aware of this student who had represented schools he had been in, winning tournaments abroad, something any school would be grateful for. Still, he had no privileges other than being watched in case he caused any kind of trouble. A mosquito bit me, I have a phobia. Sorry, teacher. Dash apologized sincerely and refocused his attention on the class. Devon next to him was red with fright. For a moment, she thought Dash would tell the teacher that she had hit him, and she was really scared because of the embarrassment that would follow. Dash, I'll kill you. Thanks, dear Devon Dash murmured under his breath. 
Did a mosquito bite you too, Miss Lee? Devin raised her eyebrows and said, shaking her head, No, teacher, all right, everyone, focus. The teacher shook her head and turned her attention back to the class. She had been teaching for dozens of years, and she knew this was just some foolish game between lovers. Just for today, she would let it pass, but if it happened again, she would have no choice but to reprimand the love-struck students. By the time the class ended, everyone picked up their things and began to leave the classroom because they had to go to the next one. Is the next class history. Dash packed everything into his briefcase and left the classroom while following Devin on the way. I just finished dividing the topics and assigning the arguments that each one must choose. You'll have the topic of human evolution in the debate while the boy we have on the team should be given the one on historical impact, Devin acted normally and said, by the way, no more strong emotions. Dash smiled and nodded, of course, this morning has been a tower of both positive and negative emotions. They had a peculiar way of handling their relationship. Perhaps now, they didn't repay each other's pranks, but surely at some special moment, they would. Devin never forgot anything, so Dash had to be prepared for any peculiar prank from his aggressive friend. Excuse me. While Dash and Devin were heading straight to the next classroom for their classes, they heard a weak voice behind them. Dash turned around and saw a slim looking boy, so he said, are you talking to us? Bert smiled uncomfortably and said, we're on the debate team together. I wanted to know how you want to divide the arguments before the debate. Ah, Bert, a pleasure, friend. Dash smiled and extended his hand in a friendly manner. Then he said, we were just talking about you, so it's good that you approached us first. I took care of dividing the arguments for each one, I'll hand you the theoretical part, so get ready for the practical. Oh, then I'll do it the way you choose. Bert sighed in relief that Dash wasn't like the other bullies. He had seen him confront the most feared guys in school, so he thought for a moment that it would be difficult to get along with him. Devin next to him elbowed Dash because he took all the credit when she had been doing the research, and she said, it's your turn for this, although our debate might not be today, you should be prepared. Oh, I thought we should meet after class to discuss it more in depth, if today is not our debate, Bert spoke unconsciously, as if Dash and Devin were his friends, so he quickly changed his words and said, of course, if you agree. Dash sighed dejectedly and said, sorry, but we have yoga in the afternoon, so. But Dash, who was about to refuse, was immediately silenced by Devin's hand, and she said, although afternoons are reserved for other things, we could consider it. Bert, in more relief, smiled at the peculiar relationship between Dash and Devin, so he said, then we'll talk during the club hour. See you later. At least he's not a boring idiot, Devin muttered with a bit of relief. You realize he came without any preparation for a debate that could be today, right? Dash, who had removed Devin's hand, explained this detail that he had observed. That doesn't matter, let's go to the next class. After classes, there was nothing noteworthy to mention. Dash vaguely remembers dozing off during lunchtime, and only waking up as the next set of classes was about to begin. Moreover, the debate they had prepared with another team of three was scheduled for Friday, so they had no school-related obligations afterward. Exiting the school, they agreed to meet with Bert for a while to discuss the debate, so Dash and Devin had to wait for him outside. Are you sure he fits behind the seats? Devin smiled, seeing that Dash's car had very small rear seats. Dash checked his car inside, this isn't a family car, we're talking about a Ford Mustang. I still don't understand why I sound idiotic talking about my car. I guess it's because you don't know anything about cars other than this one, Devin smiled after seeing that. I'm here, guys. Bert, with a huge backpack, emerged from the school and quickly joined them. It's about time, get in, and let's escape from this reform school. It's a joke he makes, always claiming that school is no different from a prison, reform school, or workplace, Devin explained, seeing Bert nervous. He's right in saying that, everything is quite similar Bert nervously smiled and got into the car. So, I'm not crazy. Dash sat in the driver's seat and started the engine. They had decided to do this for Bert since they were a team, and this guy wasn't an idiot like many others they had teamed up with, so Dash was generous enough to invite him for some pizza while they went over the material. Upon arriving at a small pizzeria not far from the school, Devin looked at the place and slightly furrowed her brows. She then asked, is this the place you wanted to come to? Dash shook his head, this place is closer to Bert's house, I thought he'd at least feel comfortable eating here. Upon hearing these words, Devin was surprised. She knew Dash was considerate to some extent, but this was way too much. He had never done something like this for someone else, perhaps wanting to leave school had made him a bit odd. Dash stared at the menu for a while. Then, seeing Bert come back from the bathroom, he said, you can order whatever you want. Normally, I eat a whole pizza by myself, but since I've never eaten here, I'll be modest. 
The battles in the bathroom had made Dash cautious about restaurant food from places he didn't trust. There were many times when he got a stomach infection despite being very tolerant of all kinds of strange food. Devon smiled at the memory and said, I can't forget that you almost missed a competition because of a stomach infection. Yeah, that's not even half funny. Dash got annoyed every time he remembered that. So, a lord or a little bird felt it would be easy to get along with these two people, much easier than he had thought. Usually, people has age and with good looks tended to be idiots. Kylo was an easy example of the stereotypical idiot who had the chance not to be bothered and still have a partner in school. He thought the same about Dash, who had a limited number of friends. Although he had never spoken to him before, he knew Dash was quite known in school, at least enough to have some influence. With a nod, Bert smiled a little and said, I'll just order a milkshake Dash, being perceptive, knew Bert probably didn't have much money on him, due to everything being easily lost in school. So, he patted his shoulder and said, Don't worry, I'm paying, and Devon is treating. Devon furrowed her brows but didn't say anything. She didn't mind paying for a meal since Dash usually covered the expenses. However, the way he said it made it obvious that he did it to annoy her. Don't worry, consider this our treat. If you feel bad about it, you can treat us later without any problem. Dash smiled and said, Did you hear that? Order the biggest pizza, and if you can't finish it, you can take it home. After ordering what each one wanted to eat, they ordered two pizzas since Dash didn't want to eat much. Although Devon told him it didn't matter if he ate a whole pizza or just a slice, he didn't listen. Experiences without knowledge are the best, to be honest. At least you worry less about details and move forward with what you know, even if it means not having a theoretical or scientific basis in the end. So, now that we know the general topics each one will discuss, there's no need to keep discussing it. Dash usually didn't spend much time in the debate club, so after getting a general idea, he wanted to leave all school-related matters exclusively for that place. Today would mark the official reopening of the dojo in the absence of Mr. Kim. So many things happened in a day that sometimes people needed to clear their minds. Therefore, three times a year, Mr. Kim took some time off. See you at the club. Bert, who said this, got up to leave. Dash nodded and said, I can take you home. Don't worry, I want to walk to better digest the food, so it won't be a problem. Bert appreciated Dash's offer but declined it. He thought he had already caused too much trouble, so he left. This time, Devon didn't stop him. Sometimes, it's better for someone to make that decision, as you breathe much more easily. Shall we head home directly or invade the dojo? Dash asked Devon as she exited the restaurant. Let's go home, I need to pick up my uniform. It was a pleasant day in the fall, considered by many as the best time to travel due to the scenic beauty. However, in other places, it meant things could get tight. It was officially the opening day at Sakura Bushido. Those who hadn't consistently trained at the dojo during Mr. Kim's vacations, would have to start doing so if they didn't want to be expelled. Upon entering the dojo, which had undergone many renovations, there were shelves filled with trophies, awarding first place to Dash Devon, and other prizes that students from Sakura Bushido had won. Have you heard anything about the opening of a new dojo in the mall? Victor, now a 15-year-old teenager, entered and asked Mateo and Adam, who were beside him. Since classes were in the afternoon, many could arrive at any time, but that wasn't a possibility for new students enrolling today in the Kung Fu and Karate school. Adam took off his shoes at the entrance and furrowed his brows upon hearing that question, sparking his curiosity. What dojo was opened? One for karate, if I remember correctly, its name was Cobra Kai. Victor, who had visited that mall as it was close to his home, was surprised when he saw a new dojo opening. Understanding how challenging it was for a dojo to have students, especially when karate in this area seemed to be dying each passing year, they knew the struggle. Mateo, who left his shoes on the side, said, they'll have a hard time getting good students. It took this place five years to have more than 30 main students and around 40 apprentices. Although the numbers increase every month, the dropouts balance everything, and it's truly regrettable. That's not important. I researched the All Valley Tournament a while ago, and it turns out that Cobra Kai was an old dojo that was very famous in the past. That means it could become very famous again in a short time, Victor shared what he had discovered. What does that matter? Karate in the Valley is not the same as years ago, it's even worse, even though we've been undefeated champions in the male division for five consecutive years, which is historic in the competition, Adam agreed upon hearing that and added, moreover. If the dojo has just opened, it might not have the chance to win a championship. But the name is great, they'll surely do well. Then why don't you switch dojos? We are champions in different tournaments abroad, and there's even a kung fu school in China, that is the main branch of Sakura Bushido. No other karate dojo can have the same fame as us, Mateo suggested. 
Considering this, Mateo said, that may be true, but there's still a pretty significant dojo we haven't defeated yet, and we will face them in the National Karate Dojo Tournament that Dash will participate in. It's still two years away, is it really important now? Adam couldn't believe they were having this conversation. What I mean is that we're not the best in the country until we have that title, Victor disagreed. Devin shook her head and said, we'll get it. Dash couldn't compete last year because he went to China for that Kung Fu tournament, so we'll have the opportunity to participate in two more years, since Devin reached the final. It's a shame she lost due to an injury. It's not nice to cheat, but I hope she didn't hear you, or she'll break some bones during training. Just as the three were entering the dojo, they heard a charming voice behind them. Not mention what? Shit you guys are idiots, you shouldn't have mentioned that damn, why blame me? It's not like there's a curse for doing so. The bronze trio turned around and saw Devin standing next to Dash, smiling at them amicably. Do you have something to say? Did she hear us? Dash mumbled silently while looking at Devin behind her. Dash nodded and said, she's going to mess with you today. Victor was sweating cold and quickly said, we were talking about the new dojo. Dash raised an eyebrow and asked, new dojo? Yes, that new dojo called Cobra Kai, never mind, we weren't really talking about anything else, Victor mumbled as he was abandoned by Mateo and Adam, who silently entered the dojo. Just when he thought Devin would start bothering him, she turned to Dash and said, isn't that the dojo you told me about some time ago? From what we heard, it closed a long time ago. Where is that dojo now? Victor's eyes lit up, and when he saw Dash, he quickly said, it's nearby, right in the oldest mall. We'll talk about that later Dash left the conversation because he was very confused. Did Cobra Kai reopen the dojo? He didn't remember seeing anything related to Daniel LaRusso's story even after watching the three movies, but just before his death, he had heard something about plans to continue the story. Now that Cobra Kai has returned, it means everything continued 34 years after the ancient events. Very four, following the reopening of the Cobra Kai dojo, this should be John Lawrence, and the revival of his old rivalry with Daniel LaRusso. Are you okay? Devin, who was more observant, saw Dash silent for a moment. I'm a little surprised. I didn't think Cobra Kai would come back, so we must visit them when we have time. Dash, who thought things in this place would become less boring, got a little excited. That means many things, so he shouldn't get bored so soon. Train the newcomers, I'll start the class. Sakura Bushido Dojo had no more than 40 star students, so they were the center of the dojo, and the most important for participating in tournaments that demanded more. The only reason they still participated in valley tournaments was that many of their new students learned a lot by entering this type of tournament, which didn't require much. Additionally, the opponents weren't so challenging, so a student with less than half a year of preparation could experience their first tournament. But returning to the external dojo, where those with less than a year of training were gradually learning and starting to build their physical condition. Many dropped out at this stage, and no one could blame them, as it was understandable that Sakura Bushido's training was not for everyone. However, those who persevered could enjoy true teaching. Looking back, the training of the external dojo on the lower floor, was in the hands of Dash and Devon, so as it was the first day after the opening, there were new students. Shortly after, the more experienced students took charge of instructing the younger ones to increase camaraderie, making it the most pleasant aspect of the dojo. After changing, Dash came out in a white uniform with a black belt, walking alongside Devon, who was dressed the same way. When they reached the external area, Dash could see all the new students and some more experienced ones wearing uniforms. How many did you count? Dash glanced at Victor and asked. Victor approached and said in a low tone, there are 20 new students, so there's a total of 53 students. Dash nodded, and after Victor left for the upper area for class with Mr. Kim, the classes eventually began. Everyone, imitate me. This is called Haiko Dachi, better known as the resting position. Devon showed the new ones how to do it, saying, remember, both feet should be apart, with the inner part at a foot's distance. The fingers of your hands and feet should be forward. Also, the weight of your body should be evenly distributed. Rest. Now. The more experienced ones who had been here for more than half a year shouted seriously and assumed the resting position. As for those for whom today was their first class before deciding whether to continue coming to this dojo, they remained blank. Dash, we saw this, smiled kindly and said, don't be embarrassed or afraid, this is your first class, so it's normal to make mistakes. Remember that we always learn from them. Devon, who moved to the back rows, began guiding those who were poorly positioned, and started giving them advice one by one. So, after a few minutes, everyone was in the resting position. Perfect, everyone has learned the basics. Dash nodded and said, now, form a circle around, prepare for the instruction. Now. 
Once again, the more experienced students opened up from the center to the sides of the dojo, leaving the center uncovered. Dash normally didn't give this type of specific instruction, but as there were new students, and he had to give a practice before even thinking about training in martial arts. It was a special conversation that would mark a beginning and an end for many of the new students who wanted to belong to Sakura Bushido. Move to the sides, imitate your more experienced companions, and assume the resting position again as you've been taught. Devon, who had completely changed her attitude, looked at all the other students with an authoritative gaze. Rest. Now. This time, everyone assumed the resting position, but there were some who didn't know how to do it, and this was noticed by Dash, who was at the front of everyone. Once again, those with poor posture were corrected, but this time, not as kindly. What they had just been taught made them all lose time, so after the first instruction, if there were no doubts, everything would be fine. However, if a mistake was made on the second attempt, it would be sentenced. Class, what punishment is there for mistakes? Dash shouted, looking even more authoritative than Devon, who was guiding the new students for the second time. The punishment is 30 push-ups. Everyone familiar with the classes shouted in unison, and everything seemed so coordinated that it was scary. This was the first class that Dash wanted to give to everyone. He knew that many would drop out, but he wanted to make it clear the seriousness of the classes and the consequences of training in this place. For many, the discipline taught here might seem excessive, but the mothers of those who had trained here came to thank for the change in attitude their child had undergone over the sessions. The qualities of the discipline taught here were not just for martial arts, but also for the rest of life, something many didn't understand. As you are new, there will be no punishment. Perhaps half or all of you won't be here tomorrow, so I won't bother reminding you what it means to make a mistake, understood? Yes sensei. Dash, who has skills beyond those of a teacher, had gained the qualities to teach. So, being the star everyone wanted to beat in this dojo, it was an honor to receive his teachings that had taken him far in martial arts. Very well, then let's begin. Everyone must have come to Sakura Bushido for its fame throughout the San Fernando Valley. Some were brought to this place by their mothers, upon hearing that discipline and values would be taught here. Dash walked around the center and said, the reason you are here is not far from the truth. However, there will be cases where some of you are here because you want to learn to defend yourselves, and in other cases, to strike back at those who mess with you at school. There were many reasons to learn martial arts, some more innocent than others. However, each of them had to be addressed in the first class, since there could be serious consequences for the apprentice, and that would be Sakura Bushido's fault for not teaching them correctly. Dash approached a boy with a bruised cheek and said, Defending yourself is not bad, but if your plan is to use martial arts to achieve everything you haven't been able to accomplish now, it would be better for you to leave this school. Life doesn't work that way, you can defend yourself now, and maybe, with luck, they'll stop bothering you. But there will be times when they'll come after you with twice as many friends, so even if you're an expert in martial arts, they might beat you up. Dash made a pause and said, but here, if you want to learn, I'll teach you the right way to win a fight, and even better, the right way to choose when and when not to fight. Martial arts were incredible, but nowadays, everyone carried a knife in their pocket or a gun, so wanting to show off knowing martial arts was just asking to die quickly. Also, believing that they would be lucky to win a fight against four people was foolish, street fights were not clean, and there were no codes of honor. Dash wanted to make this clear so that no Sakura Bushido student would get the wrong idea when learning the martial arts taught in this place. When Devon heard Dash's class, she nodded in agreement with this point because she had discussed it with him. Fights were not good outside tournaments, especially when you fought without knowing what each enemy was capable of. Devon knew that Dash might not implement these clauses correctly, but situations were often unavoidable, but that didn't mean everyone was in that type of situation all the time. Some might have something like this. Dash, who was speaking seriously, suddenly pulled out a black object from behind his back. When everyone saw this, they fell silent, their hearts squeezed with fear, and they all began to look at the older students. What the hell is he doing? I want to get out of here. He's crazy. Dash frowned and said, Devin, come forward. Doing just what Dash asked, in front of all the students, Devin stood in front of Dash to serve as an example to the others. Maybe some noticed, but the gun in Dash's hands was fake, so there was nothing to worry about. Dash stared at Devon for a moment and, raising his gun towards her, said, Class, what do you do against a gun? Run, Sensei. How do you avoid this situation? Not fighting recklessly, Sensei. How do we face this situation if it's inevitable? Dash looked towards the class and asked in a loud voice. Analyzing our surroundings very well, Sensei, withdrawing from dangerous places, and not bothering the people around us. All the new students were stunned, just now, many who didn't know what was happening, understood that it was a lesson. 
Dash shouted and said, Respect, discipline, and inner peace are what is taught in this dojo. If you are angry, you can release all your fury in training. If someone bothers you, we will teach you how to handle it in the best possible way. And if you can't do it, an older peer will do it for you. Do you understand? Yes, sensei. The eyes of many lit up at this point, some felt their blood boiling because of how things had unfolded, so they began to understand the value of this place. Some had come here because the mothers of other boys had talked to them about how incredible this place was for the education of young children, and just now, Dash had been generous enough to give them a good lesson. All those who thought martial arts were a joke stopped thinking that before realistic classes that would be given in this place. This was outside their thoughts about this place, and not seeing tricks or inspirational conversations to make them lions in life changed their minds. At least it was realistic, so belonging to Sakura Bushido couldn't be that bad in most cases. They just hoped that the training wouldn't be so tough from now on. All yours, Devon. Dash smiled as he finished his talk and left the rest to Devon to start the warm-up training. Alright, class, we'll start with warm-up exercises, so if you're here, you should at least have confidence in your physical condition. Devon said as she instructed the students to form up in their respective positions. For her, this was the best part of the first class because she could see with her own eyes how those who trusted their physical condition fell to the ground exhausted. The first class was designed to push the students to their limits both mentally and physically, before starting with the martial arts. This was not just for Sakura Bushido, but also for the students who wouldn't last long in training. Leaving early sometimes is much better than doing it late. If they couldn't handle today's training, it would be better for everyone to quit Sakura Bushido, as this would not be their home. How many do you think will come tomorrow? The question took Devin by surprise, but she smiled. Many more than we think. It seems that everyone who came is very interested in learning martial arts, so I believe that most will show up tomorrow. She knew that in most cases, new students didn't show up for classes again due to the intense first teaching session. The practical class that Dash did with Devin was something she recommended him not to do, but as the classes went by, she believed that maybe it was the right thing. No one who has learned martial arts is an expert in dodging bullets, that's not even possible. Because of this, non-young boys might get the wrong idea about learning in this place. Dash was surprised by the response, but only for a moment, then, he nodded in understanding. The lack of explanation for why this was happening didn't make sense, much earlier, that hadn't happened, and now it seems that things were changing. Having a slight suspicion of what he had heard, he wondered aloud, could it be because of that? Devin turned her head to see the student still training, throwing punches in the air. You're a bit off after hearing about Cobra Kai. Do you have something on your mind that you want to share? They had known each other for a long time, enough to know that something was going on in these kinds of moments, so Devin wanted to know what Dash was thinking at that moment. Dash thought about it and then said, Cobra Kai was a very famous dojo, but his relationship in the last two years with Daniel LaRusso was the worst. I can't judge both sides since there's no one who is entirely right, but things will get stirred up if they meet again, and they surely will. Devin seemed to understand, but she still didn't fully understand why Dash was concerned. Other people's problems shouldn't be theirs, so there was no way that was the only thing. We'll visit the dojo tomorrow, it would be interesting to see how the sensei is, and find out how far they'll go. Dash wanted to visit it and see if it was who he thought it was. Dash seemed to have a lot on his mind, so Devin went back to finish a few more exercises before concluding the class, and starting to train a little more before heading home. Returning to his training, Dash began to hit the training dummy with precise blows, and suddenly, his fists opened, turning his attacks into open palm strikes, becoming even faster and more agile. Boom. 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 The strong punches were effective because Dash combined fist attacks with open palms. This set of completely different techniques had become more agile. It demonstrated that his complete mastery of these attacks was absolute, and that he had trained them countless times. At the end of the demonstration, a figure appeared behind him. Excellent. Just as Dash stopped, an excited voice was heard very close. Immediately after turning around, he could see Mr. Kim, who had come down from the second floor to see the progress of the classes, and could see that Dash's speed hadn't diminished at all. Attention class. Devin shouted when she saw that Mr. Kim had arrived. Already. All those who were practicing straight punches and the kung fu stance stopped, looked at Devin, and waited for instructions. Rest. Yes sensei. Mr. Kim nodded, seeing that everyone had correctly executed the rest. He didn't doubt the skills of Devin and Dash, who were the best students at Sakura Bushido, but as the teacher of both, he didn't have to leave all the work to them, so he came down to see the progress. 
you should already know your sensei Devin Lee and Dash Hale. Both are the stars of Sakura Bushido and some of the best fighters in the country, being the youngest to win championships that others couldn't in their youth. Yes sensei. Mr. Kim nodded and said, the battles in the tournaments are incredible, but only the main students have the right to participate in them. But don't worry, talent overcomes many things, so everyone has the opportunity to ascend to the main class, as long as they win the tournament that we do every year exclusively for Sakura Bushido students. Of course, only the outer class is considered for that tournament, and among the best, besides moving up a class, they will have the opportunity to challenge any Sakura Bushido student. Understand that the best students will be considered for national and international tournaments, so today you may be training here, but by tomorrow, you could be on your way to China to participate in a tournament. All the new students looked at each other in surprise, they didn't think this dojo was so famous, since it wasn't talked about much on social media. However, after today, they would realize that many of the things they were unaware of are more incredible than they seem. But don't get too excited, you can find the fights from many of our competitions on our website. Also, if you consider continuing training, you'll need your uniform. Mr. Kim nodded towards the class and said, That's all for today, go rest and decide if you belong to Sakura Bushido or not. Yes sensei. All the new students broke ranks and began to move away to the area where they had left their shoes. Many love being able to come to this place, so after today, they will keep coming because it seemed like a very decent place with clean principles. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.